Wag wag lids, before this amazing episode of Have A Word, we need to tell you about our Patreon, which is one of the best Patreons in world comedy. We are officially the fastest growing Patreon on the planet at the minute. <laughs> fastest growing Patreon, and that's because for just three quid, five quid, or ten quid a month, you get an extra episode a week, early access to these public episodes, and access to the entire back catalogue of all the Patreon stuff we've done in the past, which includes... The specials, the ghost hunts, the lockdown lock-ins, which are now fucking legendary. Some of the live shows. It's the best money you will ever spend. The roast event oh, is yeah. going on Patreon oh, yeah. early in March. You get to see that. You also get early access to my tour tickets, Dan's tour tickets, live show tickets. And to be honest with you, live show tickets don't really last very long on Patreon. So if you're not a patron, you're probably not being able to come to any of them that we've put on recently. You're only going to get to be there if you sign up at patreon.com slash have a weird pod and join the 10,000 strong army of fucking lunatics. Megan. Wag wag leads, you're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com, the very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go, Ed, get on me. Are you ready to do a he's podcast? Hey. Carl's not, but he is. <laughs> Carl's still on a frankly beautiful looking holiday. Here's for, these are for you, Carl. Why have you been on holiday as well? I've been on a 5 out of 10, at best, holiday. I've been on a £1,600 package holiday. A holiday? That has cost me four and a half grand. Why? C because it just fucking wasn't as good as the money you, I paid. That should have been well better. Why? What? what? It just was not good. What, what I'm going to try and be positive <laughs> about some of the things about the holiday because I've got some negatives. And I was like, knowing that you're oh, coming dear. in, how was the holiday? And you want to be like, it was lovely, lovely time with the family. Um, There was some nice bits. Some of the weather was good. Six of the nine Are days- Are you and Laura still married? Yeah, we're still married. Oh, right, okay. Laura's not the fucking issue. Right. Uh, we had Laura we and still got I, both the babies? We've got, we have got both <laughs> children. Right, Didn't okay. leave one. No, though, he got <laughs> fucking close. There was a balcony. <laughs> what if he just... <laughs> I love that cat. Love that child. More in this country. Uh, we had about three hours uh, in the middle of the holiday where my mother-in-law and her boyfriend looked after the kids for four hours. And me and Laura were on like a lounger. We had a really nice time for about three and a half hours. That was good. I enjoyed about a cumulative maybe five hours of being on the beach. Being on the beach is my holiday jam. I'm not a massive pool guy. I like being on the beach. I am the exact opposite. All right. I could just love the sand and the... the Sand's the right. worst thing in the world. So overrated, it looks good. But you'll still be finding sand up your ass in six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the chief. Uh, you will though, won't you? Whenever you go to the beach, like six months later, you go to put a pair of socks on and there's just sand all over your fucking... Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I get it. It is It is annoying. But I just, I just think... It, I don't want to sound like a fucking hippie. Something nice about being on the sand, the 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 sea, the view, the breeze. Sounds some, like a euphemism for drugs. That is some well. saggy Spanish sun. tits. I love... You know, it's, there's something about it, isn't it? Um, right, now, now I'm struggling to find good stuff. It depends. Oh, I found these sweets at the shop. They were good. Spanish sweets. I tell you what, if you're talking uh, about your holiday, and the third thing you list as a positive is the sweets in the shop. It didn't go to plan, did it? Um, what was the plan? I like Spanish you crisps. Most of them. Lays. They were good. Lays. Ruffles, for some reason, always better abroad. It's a ruffle. A ruffle. It's a uh, ridged crisp. Ah, oh, like McCoy's. Um... I'm running Dan, out of things. We now. don't want to know about the good stuff. Right. Want the bad stuff. Oh, oh there's this one German kid who was sound. He was fun. Child. Oh, he was really fun. <laughs> Tried to talk to Etta and he was like, Oh, he's a fight some fear some fucking. Some, some, some. It was great. And Etta was like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying, mate. And his mum was like, Say that English. And he was like, I don't know what you mean, mum. <laughs> I shouldn't fucking think it was fucking brilliant. <laughs> Messing around, talking to Laura, talking to me. He was so sorry. Right. Things that were shit. Every other German child. What a little set of ball bags they are. Eds are just trying to make friends and they're like, I don't fucking know you. Oh, I hated him. Um, <laughs> the buffet. Absolute dog shit. 
Oh, it, was it always is awful. in Spain. Oh, mate, but this is an expense. This was decent money. The buffet was trying to be good. How'd you fuck up pizza? I bet a pizza in the late nineties in uh, school at the sc- in the school dinner hall. Yeah, but school and I paid pizza, a lot less. School pizza. I still reminisce about it to this day. The margarita of Cardinal Heenan. Right, cool. I wish they'd have been. I wish we'd have had some Cardinal Heenan dinner ladies <laughs> on the fucking buffet. Masks everywhere. Spain. Get over it. We're all ignoring COVID now. Come on. I know there's 20,000 people in hospital still with it, but we're just ignoring that. And we all hate Bojo apart from when he's like, I'm not drunk to ignore COVID. We're just ignoring it. Stop pretending there's COVID. Excuse me, raise your mask. Fuck off. Saw the pizza pizza out. (laughs) Oh, fucking knobheads. Excuse me, where is your mask, sir? No wonder I don't want to play with your children. She's dirty. She has no face covering. (laughs) Why do you think I don't want to talk to this bitch? (laughs) The gayest German kid. I don't want to talk to you. I don't know you. And you're not into S&M like we are. We're dirty German children, yeah. A German child is into S&M, but encourages the wearing of a mask. Yeah, and you may- can whip me on the pussy, but put your mask on while you're doing it. I say, love a mask, gimp, COVID, vivez them all. Um, just my son, just trying to kill himself all the time. <laughs> Suicide, suicidal little knobhead. Oh my god! Just uh, what I know. What we'll do is we'll make a holiday home for kids, you know. And there's like children. That, should we make everything out of marble? Do you want sharp corners everywhere? <laughs> yeah, let's make sharp corners everywhere because families love sharp corners, don't they? Made out of marble, the hardest thing in existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jack's like, da, 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 da. I wonder if I headbutt that. Where should I headbutt it? I'll go for the corner. Ah! Oh my god! Such a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Such a nightmare. And the Spanish, the, the people who, just the cleaners, who were lovely, were just, the timing on them going, hello, I'm cleaning. Just as you're trying to, just as you're getting him down for a nap, which he was like, not doing as well. He's like, it's we were like, like, get him down for a nap. And he's like, smell Spanish. I don't want to sleep. And you're like, please fucking sleep. <laughs> They've got an ear on the door. They're like, I'm waiting for one snore. And he just goes, hey, <laughs> hello. I cleaned the floor literally. for you. I cleaned the floor for you. Esmeralda, just not quietly. Okay, I will. Maybe baby asleep. <laughs> Has sleeping. Hola, Fuck senor. You. Hola. <laughs> so at the start of the holiday, I did that thing that we've done here with the staff. You know, and you're like, be overly friendly to anyone who works here. Because I just find uh-huh. it, as soon as you go, hello, it's too much. Like, I was loving that game. Laura can't play that game. I was absolutely loving that game. And by about day. Oh, you mean acting special with the staff? <laughs> and they'd be like, hola, because they have to be like, hola. So I'd be like, hola. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and by day five, I was like, I'm not playing this game. I'm bored of you. Um, well, fun. It was good being the scum. That was good. We had an amazing thing where I was, look, I was like looking at the holiday going, just sat in this dinner hall. And there was English, some French, German. Oh, more, more. That's the French. Well done. <laughs> And I was like, Laura, to be fair, there's no rough cunts here, is there? To be fair. So no I was looking around. English, was, no. just, just, it, you were just looking around going, no one's, no one's like toasty as fuck. No one's like, oi. And then I was like, but in theory, wherever you are, someone's the roughest cunt. Because that's <laughs> how it works. And then I looked yeah, at- Even at like the Royal Variety performance, there's a roughest person in the <laughs> There room. has to be. It doesn't matter if everyone is rich. Someone is the most scalliest, right? And then I looked at our table and I was wearing a football top and Etta was picking her nose and she had a lollipop in the other hand and my chat, my baby was fucking throwing food everywhere. I was like, oh my God. We're the scum of the holiday. It's liberating that. Loved it. Fucking loved it. It's why I love shopping in Waitrose. Just ruining Tory Nana's fucking shopping trips. Going, how can you afford it? (laughs) Patreon dickheads. Um, (laughs) So glad to be back. So glad. Laura asked quite sincerely if we could come back three days early. Which would, have really? been, which would have been a cunty move considering her mum and her mum's boyfriend were there. Imagine that. Like, hey, Rob, you sort yourself out. Bye-bye. So I'm back. Very, honestly, <laughs> Good so, so nice to see you. Give yourself a round of applause on the thing. Oh, so beautiful to be back. Uh, Freddie nailed the Patreon. Freddie was good. Freddie was Vicky good. Vicky was great, but it's just not the same, mate. Never seen a response uh, like the response Vicky got, which I fucking yeah. love. Insane. Because... Because the, we have been, there's been more male guests on this pod. There's yeah. just, it's just how it works. There's more 
blokes in comedy. We've got female friends. I still think Helen Bauer is one of my favorite female guests. Not yeah. one of my favorite guests. Yeah, but just generally and speaking, Johnson's men are just better than women in every department. And, and that's why know, there's a lot of men on. No, no. And that helps. <laughs> and that helps. <laughs> but to have, to have Vicky Patterson become instantly absolute pod royalty the first time she was a guest, but now it's gone up a level. Yeah, uh, it was good. great to see. So very good sense loved of humor. Um, I, uh, I I realized last night I had one of those moments where I realized how much we get away with on this podcast, humor wise. Oh yeah. So last night, very kindly, was invited to go and play a game of poker in London with uh, True Geordie, his uh, pod sidekick Lawrence, uh, Stephen Tries was there, Adam McCola, who's a Man United fan YouTuber, uh, and a lad called Rory, Chelsea fan YouTuber, and. They're all really sound. I went to play poker with them. And it's a game of poker while you're sort of podcasting. You're chatting, trying to be funny and talking about footy and whatever. Um, and I, I just took it too far. And then everyone, like they would have laughed at Were it. Were you drinking? Yeah, we had a few. Yeah, okay. Um, Not like a lock-in though. No. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> like before, and we're all making really inappropriate jokes like we would do in here. So I'm like, right, this is all within my wheelhouse. But then... They've got big sponsors and stuff, so they have to tone it down just a little bit. So that, like, we're talking about fussy for ages, and Stephen tries. It obviously is very, very funny. There's always undercutting everyone else's humour with his own. And he's like, "What about this?" So I'm about fussy for five minutes. So I'm like, what do you think, Stephen? He's like, "I don't know why we're talking about football when Britney's pregnant, right?" So I'd seen an Instagram post the day before from Britney going, "I'm pregnant, but I'm not happy about it." I'm paraphrasing. Um, <laughs> Sp- Spears, quite yeah. Close. yeah, yeah, yeah. Britney Spears, right? But, okay, so. Uh, Lawrence went, oh, well, fuck off. I'm going to go and check it. And the post, he couldn't find it. And I went to <laughs> the Geordie lads. <laughs> he went, he went, oh, she must have deleted it. And I went, what, the baby, right? And they all laughed. That wasn't the bad bit, right? They all laughed at that. And Lawrence went, oops, I did it again. So I went, hit that baby one more time. <laughs> I mean, come on. When the ball is spiked up, what are you going to do? Not smash it. I was like Zidane watching it fall, <laughs> and they, like they literally just went, "No, we can't, we can't do that." <laughs> they all did a Will Smith. <laughs> uh, hey, keep Britney's baby's name out of your fucking mouth. Um, yeah, that was very fun. Um, been watching lots of football. You're having the best time of your life, but that by the sounds of it, aren't you? Obviously, yeah, yeah. the arena sales. Arena's great. Oh my god. Tour's great. <laughs> Liverpool are the best team in the world. And I am quite literally drowning in pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Stay up! <I> can't swim! <laughs> That's um, not true. Not true. Um yeah, it's been a very fun time. It's great. Fucking brilliant. And this but you co- but you're giving off that. Like I know I, I sort of t- took the piss a couple Give of weeks ago. When vibe. you start you've started about I'd say Six out of every seven podcasts recently were like, I feel fucking great. Like, <laughs> which is which is great, because obviously you had a pretty fucking minging, as a mate of yours, very close working relationship we've got, but obviously we're mates. And I talk to you, like, of course it's podcasting, but I don't talk to any of my friends as intensely as no. I talk to you. And we're trying to make everyone laugh and it's a podcast, of course, right, cool. But what happens is you're massively invested. Me and Adam very rarely have a phone call out of this, like... Because it's a waste. We just have a little yeah. chat sometimes, we're catching up. This is re- I feel totally invested in when you're on. You were having a minging January. Oh, that was... was about as bad as any of my mates have been through anything i know car was there and just for so you. the listeners know like i haven't gone into a lot of details about this he's not just talking about the breakup at all no, your dad was, was ill you're having a there was just car crash after car crash after car crash after car crash and the breakup was sort of a catalyst for s- certain things but 12 uh, weeks later so not even that it's two two months two not you're absolutely flying lad the Liverpool, to see. Bit, got tickets to almost every game i'm gonna try and go to benfica away this might come back to bite me in the ass i've already got me flight hotel and Eurostar back booked for the champions league final in paris and if we don't get there i'm gonna hope some man city fans take them off my hands no, no, you're not, <laughs> not gonna go and hang out with a load of mancunians <laughs> it would make for fucking very entertaining patreon content just add them walking around paris like nah, nah, <laughs> <laughs> Should go anyway. 
Just take your Liverpool top and just walk around all the City fans. I'm going to be all ten of them. Eh? I think I think they'd be pretty sound about it. I know yeah. there's a lot of like fucking animosity, but it would show you being pretty sound. Not the most fun weekend you could ever have. I think if what I might do genuinely, if we don't get to the final, and Liverpool are huge favourites at the minute to get to the final. You know, it, there's no, no easy games in the semi final of the European Cup, but we're, we're huge favourites to get there. A Villarreal are like not a fuck it. I mean, I know they're a good. Is it Unai Emery? Yeah, yeah, he's good. Cup Good-y god me. though, European Cup god. Like he's won so many uh, Europa leagues. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he he's only ever had the chance to win Europa leagues. Really, like this is his first shot. Like yeah, he's done. Seville should have got in the Champions League instead of being like, no, yeah. it's okay. <laughs> we just want to do Europa again and again and again. We keep knocking on the Champions League door. Like, hello. It's Champions League. But if, if we don't get there and I can get a ticket somehow, I might just go to the Champions League final anyway. It's the greatest game in football. Like, why? I've got the flight booked. I can't refund it. I've got the train booked. I can't refund it. Why not just go? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't think you'd have as much fun as you think you might. Why? Would you be a Real or... No, I'd support for the Real. Oh, hang on. Oh, Villa, so Vi- oh, yeah, so Villarreal would... All right, cool, of course. Yeah. Villarreal, Man City, or Villarreal, Real Madrid. Yeah, it's just nowhere near as fun, is it? No, it's not. Uh, even, like, absolutely even, not. Uh, it doesn't uh, matter anyway, because Liverpool are going to win everything. But, all right, yeah. Yeah. There's not a chance you're getting beat by Villarreal. <laughs> <laughs> There's no easy cup game and you're... It would be one of the like, biggest upsets. You're going to win, like, 6-0. It, like, <laughs> no, aren't they a pretty well-run team? Yeah, and as I mean, well done as you can be. Well, yeah. Just be buying so them. Much better. All right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Good luck, my friend. Good luck. And the um, the arena sales were so funny because it was coming through on the first day of the holiday, and the weather was shit, and everyone was like, mm, mm. Laura was tired, and the baby wasn't napping. <laughs> the we're, sales. I was just like constantly watching them. <laughs> we're I'd, saying at this point though, the sales are amazing, but we've opened up to full capacity, and there's plenty left. If you haven't booked yet. Get your tickets booked. Oh, yeah, we sold out the pre-sale, but the pre- people were like, you sold out the arena, and you're like, no, you don't know what a pre-sale is. There's I a, mean, we're going to. There's a huge chunk of tickets that get sold in that first thing called the pre-sale, yeah. and the patrons fucking gobbled them up. That's not every ticket. There's loads to sell. So if you want to come and watch the arena show, fucking do it. You can get them on the arena website, gigsandtours.co.uk, and I'm going to add it to my website tomorrow, so you can get them there. I think I might have already done it, actually, but I don't know. Um. Yeah, very exciting times in a it really is life. Yeah, I um having stood that was the last time I can't believe that was only a week and a half ago to stand in the arena and look round it. I it know feels like you've been gone for six weeks. It, yeah, I, mentally I feel like I've been gone for six weeks. Um, that was exciting, wasn't it? To to stand in there. There's been some moments where. Those, those milestone moments, that was definitely one of them. As you and me stood in the middle of an empty arena and went, hey! it was only <laughs> two and a bit years ago we were in my fucking box room. Going, right, what features do we want to do? All right, have you written a have a word or have I written? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, I've been thinking in the ass, <laughs> And I liked it. And I liked it. <laughs> from John. <laughs> That's from the first John. <laughs> the first of many Johns. <laughs> uh, I love that tweet of the guy who was like, I'm on episode 39. I was just wondering if you uh, you're still doing it, Adam. Fucking hell. Do you know, like, I get so irrationally angry. Time travel tweets. Like, in the end, I, I, I see it as funny and I sort of have a laugh at them. And I messaged them back going, how many messing? This is fit. Is it good? Oh, it's good. Get it out. They haven't paid us yet. All right, cool. Fuck them. What is it, Dan? It's sneak. Get on me. Get on me. <laughs> the energy drink. I've had five coffees today. Good. I think I've just had my fourth. <laughs> Do you know the commitments I've got to this fucking show? I, I should have got a guest co-host today, but because you've been away, I was like, I don't want to do that to the listeners. You know, they haven't had us both together for a while, and Carl's still not back. But today, there's no trains this weekend from London to Liverpool. London, Houston's essentially closed, right? So tomorrow for the FA Cup semi-final, that Liverpool are also in, uh, no train, got to drive down. Uh, my mate's driving. I'm getting twatted. Um, I also had a little genius plan to say about in a minute. I'm getting ADHD brain because I've had too much coffee. Okay, anyway, I'm in, I'm in. I'm in. Um, I had to get the two trains and a bus to get here today. So my train was at 6am to Kettering. Uh, oh, got off at Kettering. Love it. love it. Got a bus to Rugby. And then from Rugby, got a train to Runcorn. 
Right. Christ. Well, here's me. Here's, here's the thing. It's a sexy, sexy route. Here's the thing. Right. Here's, here's where old Rowie Genius. You're drunk out. on coffee. I am <laughs> squatting. <laughs> it. It's the way you went. Here's the thing. I just like that. So yesterday. Uh, <sighs> right. So. <laughs> Here's what my week's been. He's drunk on Kettering. Tuesday, I had to go down to London. Was it, no, Wednesday, I had to go down to London for a meeting, right? Very exciting meeting. It's all beautiful. Uh, went to London, quick lunch, come straight back, went to the Benfica game. That was Wednesday. Thursday, I had to go down to London. That was yesterday. To do True Geordie. And I've come back this morning for this. Tomorrow, going back down to London again for Wembley. And I've got to stay there till Monday. Um, partly because I can't get back and partly because I've got a meeting on Monday. Um, also, you get to have a hangover then. Oh, yeah, but I'm also going to go out for a drink on Sunday. So here's, <laughs> of course you are. Here, here's, here's where the genius comes in, right? True Geordie, very kindly, the production company, paid for me to stay in the Hilton Hotel near Euston, right? So what I did was... <laughs> True Do- Geordie are doing I, aren't they? Right. So I've booked the same hotel for myself for tomorrow and Sunday. So what I did was... Get on this, lad. Right? Yesterday, I took a suitcase down with all my clothes for tomorrow, for Sunday, and for Monday, right? So, and when I checked out this morning at 5.30 a.m., I said, can I just leave this bag in your luggage storage for, like, 36 hours? And he's like, yeah, no problem. So tomorrow, I can just drive down. We may go straight to Wembley after the match, go to the hotel and check in, and my luggage is already there waiting for me. And that's clothes for Sunday going out drinking. That and is... Monday to get back. That's super smart. Because every time we've done the NFL in London, been about five times, once with you guys, but I've done it four times in the past, you, you're setting off at dickhead o'clock on a Sunday morning and you're all going boozing on the Sunday night and you've got a hotel, but the hotel's there and the fucking, you need to get to Wembley. It's such a fucking ball like where you're like, where am I putting this bag? What are you doing? So twat. That is smart. Wicked yeah. smart. Yeah. Um, Do you like Wembley? You found you have you I've only fan? ever been for the NFL. I've been once to Wembley in my life. Right. NFL. This is my first Liverpool in a in a, in a Wembley game experience. It's obviously very well made, but I think they've given you too much space. They've given like it feels like they've gone and obviously you need walkways and everything. But we were up at the top and it was just absolutely miles from the pitch. Well, we're, really, we're, we're in the when gods. When we were at Tottenham, fucking hell, that was such a good spot, wasn't it? Well, we're in the gods tomorrow, but I genuinely don't care. Yeah. You could literally put me on a fucking helic in a helicopter above the centre circle and be like, here's binoculars, lad, watch it. I just want to be there. I don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell you the story? I Love it. I assume I'm allowed to do this because they haven't told me. Can I tell you the story about what I was doing at Liverpool's training ground? Because I purposefully didn't tell Freddie so I could tell you. Go on. Oh, you t- I saw the... Yeah. Right? So I, I got to go to Liverpool's training ground this week on Monday. It's been a very busy week. Um, to prank. You are due some sort of fucking... Cancer or AIDS or something. Well, I was going to say three points on your licence. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you've had a good couple of months, I don't want you to find a lump. Lose a bollock. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. 36 hours in the fucking, you know, I've got all my clothes. I have lost a testicle. <laughs> but, you know, if you ever let well, fucking Champions League, come on. How many testicles now? <laughs> Would I give up for a Liverpool? Right. Three ch- Champions Leagues in a row. I'd give you both my testicles for Liverpool to win all four trophies this year. Oh, no. Yeah. As long as I could, like, no! Preserve some spunk first. No! For future babies. 100%. Oh, no! Yeah, you can get what? the classic ones now. Give me... To be all f- right, one ball for three trophies, but I don't want to take bo- both balls. You can have both of them. For a... Qu- Guaranteed quadruple. Oh. Have me bollocks. Oh. Have them. We've got to do, as a Patreon special, the last jizz. <laughs> <laughs> get 200 people in the front. You've got to, you've got to give me, like, four weeks... To, to, to fit, well, no, that's To find a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them. No, but like, you can, you can fucking Mickey Mouse it, can't you? You can freeze them. You know, like Walt Disney's cryogenically frozen. Cool, yeah, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> that well known term for jizzing and freezing it. You know, Mickey Mouse it. You know, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, it's easier, you know. Fucking Minnie Mouse. Goofy. You know, fucking the old Goofy. You know, Donald Duck. You know, you know, uh, Toy Story. You know, Disney Pixar it. You know, Toy Story, one, two, three and four it. I haven't seen Spaffy the fourth. Oh, sorry. <laughs>
Um, did you say Daffy Duck? Spaffy Duck. Yeah, but that's what Warner Brothers, isn't it? Back in your box. Oh, is it? Back in your oh, fucking box. Fucks. Ah, oh, you fucked that up. Ja! Upset me, tunes, not- Jesus is, yeah. Christ. Dude, um, you were doing beautifully, though. You'd never be able to get kicked on the balls again. True. Be straight in the cock, though, wouldn't it? I'm sure that hurts a little bit, although the cock can take some punishment. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it before I finished it. I mean, the cock, and I know this from punishing my own dick, but it's not, you never go, oh, oh no, I have actually in the past. Yeah. Yeah. In a zip. Wah. Wah. Mm, yeah, I suppose eventually. One little, yeah, it's the balls that take the punishment, isn't 100%. it? 100%. They're, they're sensitive. They're dangly. It's not good. Oh, you wouldn't look right though, would you? You get prosthetic ones, don't you? You don't. You can get prosthetic. They just put like table tennis balls in your in your scrotum. Table tennis balls. You need something a bit fucking heavier than that. Right. Wow. This Golf feels balls. A bit then. light. Golf balls. A little too heavy. I Bouncy think. balls. Bouncy balls. They, they love the texture. <laughs> Slapping off her. <laughs> <laughs> getting some fun. Getting a kick here. <laughs> fuck off. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fucking fuck end up on the fucking extension. What? Just went through the Houston Hilton fucking wall. <laughs> So, the reason I brought this up is, so I got to go to Liverpool's training ground to do a prank video. Very well remembered. For AXA, right, who sponsored Liverpool's training ground at a car insurance company, yeah. right? So I've now asked AXA, can I have their corporate tickets for the Champions League final instead of payment for the fucking advert? That's so smart. I, was like, I, I, I messaged Landon, my agent, and I was like, I'll still pay you your commission, but just tell them I don't want the money. What commission? How can he get commission? What do you mean? Fifteen percent of a seat. Why did no, you do I'll that? Gi- I'll give him what he would have got anyway. Oh yeah. Me, you know what I mean? Side deal. Fucking in your back, jock it. Um. Yeah. So they got in touch. They basically, oh lad, it was so funny. So it was Harvey Elliott, who's Liverpool's young starlet, uh, Divock Origi, and Alex Oxlade Chamberlain. But Alex Oxlade Chamberlain was in on the prank, right? And we can't make this a clip. We'll just have to leave this in the episode for the proper listeners. Yeah. Because their video is obviously going to go out in a few weeks, um, I so the idea was they they were they were doing an advert for AXA as part of their contract. They have to do certain things for the sponsors and stuff. So they've been told you've got to do this advert for car insurance today at the training ground once you finish training, right? Uh, so they had a real director who was talking to me, and they had a fake director who was supposed to be directing them and me in the advert, right? The fake director was comedian Joe Bohr. Oh, I know Joe Bo, right? Oh. So he's he's acting really stressed and like, oh, we've got we've got so much to do, right? So he's got them doing like, right, I need you to uh you all need to do A X A so we can see AXA spells out. And they're like, <laughs> and well, like, he's like, like, like like YMCA. Yeah. Oh my and he, god. And he literally went like YMCA and Harvey Elliott goes like this and he goes, No, we're not doing YMCA, we're doing AXA, right? <laughs> But it was he was so good at it, and it was so well put together. Yeah, it was good, man. And he had, he said, right, you've got it all one by one. Say this right down the camera. So it was they didn't have it for car insurance, and they were looking right down the camera, going, "Ask for car insurance, join the pride movement." Right? It was <laughs> it was so funny and not connected at all. But they're not twigging on, right? And then he goes, "Oh, because they go into these just on almost like autopilot, like just get this over with." Yeah. So he goes, right. Uh, next bit, we've got. Uh, Got a guy who's won a competition to be in the video. He's a Liverpool fan. Um, where is he? So my name was going to be Jimmy, but then they got worried that Harvey Elliott would recognise me, right? Because he's like he's a young lad. He lives in Liverpool. He's actually big. He's, he follows like Paddy the Baddy. He's a fan of his. He's yeah. been on here. They were like, "Well, what are you?" Yeah, high visibility. Tweet? Yeah. He's like, so we need you to play yourself, but it just turns out you're a lunatic in real life. So I had to act like a <laughs> super fan, right? I mean, this was a difficult role, wasn't it? Did you really have to struggle to get into it? I just had to act a bit special, to be honest oh, with you. Oh, right. right? Okay. <laughs> so I walked in, and what I had to do was, so <coughs> Joe Bors here, Harvey Elliott's where you are, and Divock and I look across the chamber there, so I just had to walk in and be like, and stare at him like that. And Joe's going, <laughs> Adam, we need to start doing the video, mate. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> so he's getting really nervous. <laughs> and then I had to go, can we do the painting first? Right? And then they all go, what do you mean? I was like, done a painting of Harvey. Right? So they'd done it for me and it's horrific. And I went, I was going to paint all of yours, but this took me ages. (laughs) (laughs) Right? And they unveil it and it's horrific. And Harvey- Had you seen it before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Harvey goes, 
oh, thank you so much. And I went, do you want me to sign it? <laughs> right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, go on. He went, do you want me to sign it? And I was like, no, it's more valuable if I just do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Oxley chamberlains in on it, and he's struggling, right? <laughs> and Divock and Harvey just think that he's struggling because I'm insane, not yeah, because it's Because it's funny, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then they get four car chairs and sit them in a car formation, right? No, it wasn't four. It was two at the front and like a back three, right? So, and they're like, right, so Adam's the driver and you're just going to mime driving along the road <laughs> until we hit a pothole. And I went, what size pothole are we talking here? <laughs> Is it a little one or a, like a massive one? And Joe Ball goes, doesn't matter. And I was like, no, no, it does. Like, different potholes, different reactions. I've got to get into the zone. <laughs> and at that point, Harvey Elliott is just screaming his eyes out, <laughs> silent, cry laughing behind me. And I can't tell you how hard it was to keep a straight face. And then they go, right, actually, what we're going to do... Uh, and so I'm now looking behind me like this, right? And they're like, Adam, you need your eyes on the road. And I was like, but I can't see Harvey, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they go, right... Uh, Ox, you actually come out and we'll just have uh, Div Ox and Harvey in the back. And that made it so much harder because now Oxley Chamberlain sat in my eye line and he's really struggling, right? So we, he goes, right, and we're going down the road and he goes, and when I do this, you've hit the pothole. So we hit the pothole. And I go, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> they're just laughing. And Joe Ball goes, we don't need the noise, right? He goes, right, let's do it again. He goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> they're gone and I, I'm doing so well to keep a straight face <laughs> and then uh, he goes right we need to go bigger think bigger right and I went I don't know if I can jump any higher than I already am <laughs> and he lost it Oxley, he just lost his fucking mind and you gotta imagine so I'm sat in the front seat of a car essentially there's an empty one there Dave Ocariga can see my left cheek. So I had to look off to the distance so that he couldn't see, because I was about to go and I was about to ruin the <laughs> advert, right? Joe Boar's supposed to get more and more irate and wound up with the players. And they're pranking Harvey more than Dave So he keeps going, Ox, you're doing great. Ox is doing nothing. He's just sat there. <laughs> and he's like, Adam, you're nailing it. Dave bit of work needs to be done. Harvey, come on, mate, get on board with the rest. Just watch everyone else. This is really embarrassing. You've hit a pothole. Just think about what that would feel like in a car, right? <laughs> then they put Oxley Chamberlain back in, and he had to. We hit the pothole, and he had to go. I bet you. I bet you. You're, <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. You're relieved you with extra car insurance, Adam. I, I bet you it brings relief to know you with extra car insurance, Adam. And I went. It sure does, Alex Oxley Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> The director went, no, 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 no. We just want you to nod. So he did it again. And I turned around and went, <laughs> back to me, right? And then they swap Ox out again with Arigi. Arigi's back. And Joe's now getting like really angry. He's like, we need to get this done. This is just, and he goes to his ear. He goes, yeah, yeah, I know. Have you seen what I'm working with? Right? And at that point, Arigi goes, no, nah, man, we're not doing this. We're not having it. You don't get to talk to people like this. We don't have to do it. And the guy who's won the competition, especially, you can't talk oh, to people like this. Oh, oh, you fucking <laughs> leg. You can't do this. This is not right. We don't have to be here. And at that point, the the like one of the real like productions crew was like, Ox, tell him, tell him now. And Chamberlain's like in his face going, Dave Ox, it's a plan. He's like, no, 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 I need to talk to this guy. <laughs> he's like, we're winding you up. He's like, in a minute, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> like, mate, you don't get to talk to people like this. It's bang out of order. And then eventually, Harvey Elliott couldn't get over it. He was like, mate, I, I didn't know what to do. Here's the funniest part of all of it for me, right? I mean, but do you imagine if Div Divock Origi had punched, punched Joe Ball? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That might not be amazing for everyone, but oh, I'd take that to the fucking grave. So here, here is my the funniest bit for me. It's so stupid. So Harvey Elliott is, have a weird royalty, Alfie Brown's favourite Liverpool player. The reason for that How is... How old is he? Like 18, 19? Yeah. But Alfie really identifies with him because Alfie is a southern, well-spoken Liverpool fan, posh, uh, who has always supported Liverpool, a lifelong fan because of his family, but feels a little bit sort of rejected by Liverpool as a city because of how well-spoken he is, right? He's like a, the poshest wool. A hundred percent. Harvey Elliott is a posh southern lad who is... 
embraced by the whole team and everyone loves him. So a couple of months ago, I'm having a pint with Alfie and I'm like, oh, I love Harvey. And he goes, no, you fucking don't. I do. You've had Stephen Gerrard. Oh, you've yeah. had Carragher. You've had Trent, Curtis Jones. You've had all of them. And they're all you. It's finally fucking me playing centre midfield for Liverpool, right? Favourite player. So when I found out I was doing this, I was like, right, I know what I'll do. I'll go to the Liverpool shop. I'll get a Harvey Elliott chair printed and I'll get it signed and I'll give it to Alfie next time oh, I see him. Amazing. Right? So I tell them when I got there, I was like, I've got a Harvey Elliott chair there. I want to get it signed from me mate's his favourite player. Right? And he goes, that's even better. We'll do it as part of the prank. Right? So he'll definitely do it then. He can't say he's got to rush off at the end or whatever. We'll do it as part of the prank. So at one point in the doing the whole thing, they went, right, we're going to take a break now. You've got some shirts to sign. And I went, I've got a shirt and it's for Harvey to sign it. <laughs> right? And then I went, I was going to get a shirt of all these, but this one was really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> So then I went, Harvey, just sign this. Just just put your signature on the number. And he goes, okay, mate. And then he, he put it in the bag. And when I got it out later on, he'd put two Adam. Oh. <laughs> Makes it funnier, though. But I'd already told Alfie, I've got a present for you. But I'll tell you what it is later. So I said to him, I was like, this is still yours. And I don't know whether this makes it worse or hilariously better. <laughs> so but it better. says, two Adam, best wishes, Harvey Elliott. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. But they were all... So unbelievably sound. Like, for me to unveil the painting I did, and for him to be like, mate, thank you so much. To have that at 18 years old was very, very, very sound. Is he from West London? Is he from... He's from Surrey. Oh, okay, cool. He came through at Fulham. Wow. Good on him. I love that Origi went, this is bullshit. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Good it's so much better. If yeah. anyone... F it's like punked. Well, they got to the end the of it. Bigger, the reaction, when we got to the, the end, the, 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 the real director was like, we couldn't write that. There's no way to write that in yeah. where that actually happens. That gives the video, so, it's such a better ending. And you never get to do another because you you burn it. <laughs> you burn it. Well, Axel, if you're watching, I'll take uh, three or four Champions League final tickets, if you don't mind. Me and two of my friends have already got yeah. everything booked. So uh, He's just going to have to do all the sports where they've not watched it. So he's going to be doing like wind-up videos for the NFL. It's made me want to do Saint more Ellis. prank stuff, though. St. Ellis for Rugby League. I, I think it's made me want to do more prank stuff, and I'd really like to start, like, a a little thing with us Spin where on. we do some prank stuff and we put little videos out I and mean, bonus stuff. What, what would you do? I don't know. We need, it, need a little meeting and stuff, but... Yeah, it if was we could so, start it, with some fucking Germans in Mallorca. Let's, it was I mean. so fun. It was really, really, really enjoyable, and we could definitely do it. Would you do it to other comedians or just like normal? Like go to like a building site and just start driving cranes? Well, everyone in comedy thinks that we've got 400 grand a month because no one actually knows what this makes. So they like, don't talk to tax. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're like, I don't even know yeah. how much money we've got. <laughs> so, so it would work if basically like, we need you to come and do a Patreon special. Everyone's heard about these Patreon specials that we've only used half a dozen comics for. Yeah. We could open that up. Quiet. We should stop talking about this on the public. Don't grass us up. Uh, that was uh, absolutely phenomenal. Loved every second of that story. It's genuinely <laughs> one of my favourite things I've ever heard you fucking tell on this pod. Hope you enjoyed it too. Super to be back. Let's have a little interval. See you in a sec. Up the nets. You know there's a disturbance in the force when it's me doing an ad read because I don't do this shit normally. But Manscaped have dropped a new ad. It's important. We love these guys. They've supported us, so support them. This ultimate package includes the amazing Lawnmower 4.0. Manscaped, the leaders in male grooming, have done it again. Two million men worldwide that trust Manscaped with the new performance package 4.0 by going to manscaped.com use the code word20 for 20% off and free shipping that's specific to the lids to this podcast inside this package you'll find the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer crop preserver ball deodorant crop reviver toner performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold all your goodies 
First off, the new Performance Package 4.0 includes the new lawnmower. This trimmer is insane, and I dare say the greatest ball trimmer ever. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. It also has this amazing LED light, so if you're a maverick and you shave your balls in the dark, you can see where you go. And as I said, the Weed Whacker is amazing. It uses a 9,000 RPM motor powered 360 degree rotary dual blade system you get all of this kit within the performance package 4.0 and then seal the deal with manscapes liquid formulations their crop preserver ball deodorant for before leaving the house and the crop reviver ball toner manscapes even throw in two free gifts with every performance package 4.0 get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code word 20 treat yourself go around the house see what else you can shave but shave everything carl can you shave pets don't shave you pets balls. Just use it on yourself. 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com using the code WORD20. I Free from desire. Martin, Martin says, says that you're on fire. fire. What? Martin says on, that you're on fire. I don't know the words. <laughs> <laughs> free from desire. Mind Martin. and senses purified. Free from desire. What? Mind and senses purified. Mind and senses purified. Free from Martin desire. Martin says that you're on fire. Want more and Sing more, it. people just want more, more and more, more freedom more and love. love. What we're fighting for, free from, from desire. desire. Martin says that you're a fire. <laughs> My and love has got no money, he's got his trombolis. Well, if you've tuned in for our voices, <laughs> drink thought, it up. I've actually thought um, towards the end of this year, when my time frees up a little bit maybe, I might get some singing lessons. What can can I <laughs> put in on those singing lessons to come and watch? I do you not want to get some as well? No, <laughs> I want to watch you do singing lessons, please. What that genre? Be... What? what genre? Of I'm music? sorry. What <laughs> genre of singing lessons? Yeah. You what the fuck? <laughs> you might be an opera singer. Uh, no, 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 no. I want to be a star. Hi. <laughs> do you do singing lessons? Well, I only do country and western and reggae. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just for as a rest of periods. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's what so, so you do. You go in and they give you a, a Venn diagram. And you have to put which one you want. I want to be a. Oh, I was looking for folk <laughs> with a little bit of trip hop. Ah. Oh, sorry. you want three doors <laughs> down. Three doors down. <laughs> That's Marjorie. Three doors down. Marjorie just trip up. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> old trip hop, Marjorie. <laughs> she started in folk. She's you know evolved to trip hop. And what has trip hop done? Don't know. Just said some words. I said to you then, listening to trip hop, going, oh, I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna laugh anyway. Yeah, I, I thought it was a real thing. It is. It is. <sighs> yeah, I'm genuinely thinking about it. I think it'd just be great one day to just like if I don't tell anyone I'm doing it. Apart from now. You tell <laughs> You've got no chill. You'll tweet about it. There'll be Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I'm here with Marjorie. <laughs> with a location three doors down. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking won't tell anyone. <laughs> You'll have a five minute bit <laughs> that night. <laughs> It'll be <that> special. <sighs> I'm just going to learn to sing and then just do it. <laughs> uh, imagine if we did. Imagine. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Imagine, oh, imagine a live show in December, the arena. You know, if I just push Finn off the mic and I've got a better voice than him. You went lightheaded then, didn't you? <laughs> I haven't had any food today. And this is strong. <laughs> Snakes up on you. Yeah. Uh, How would, how would your warm-ups go for a, a country hip-hop crossover? Well, isn't that Nelly just, isn't is essentially that, yeah. country and hip-hop crossover. Lil Nas. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen him? Um, what's his name? Is it? In fact, Lil Nas. Yeah. yeah I'm going to take, take my, my heart down the old down road. But there's um, a clip from... Is it? If you just didn't know what the song was, <laughs> we just let you know. Right, you're like kingdom. It's a fucking good video. There's a, there's a clip from like one of the American late night shows, and I forget his name. Ah, 
What's his fucking name? But he, he does um, It's Getting Hot in Here as a country song. Oh, and it's... This. Have you seen it? No, but I love all... all we, can't, we can't play the vid, though. No, I'll just find out who he is. Ah. That country. He's not a country artist, though. He's a rapper. What was the song again? Um, it's Getting Hot in Here. I love countryfying. Love countryfying. Ben Folds 5, Champagne Supernova. I know I've sung it on here before, guys. Chance the Rapper. That's it. And it's fucking excellent. Like, it's really, really, really great. Uh, We'll show you it in the break. Yeah. I'm probably getting into me country stuff, you know. (laughs) There's only two artists that I like, but, you know. (laughs) Yeah. Be three soon. You don't get into genres. You get into, like, a musical or, like, an artist. I'm getting into country. I relate to them a lot. Why? Because, you know, they're like, we're downtrodden, but we're going to fight and rise. Cool. Did you make the whole of the South <laughs> Scouse then? <laughs> hey, there's nothing more Scouse than Alabama. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> Even Birmingham, Alabama. Weirdly. Right, okay. All right, I can see that, yeah. Do you know the South is the n- North? That is... Yeah. Uh, totally. Yeah, 100%. When everyone's like, oh, God, the fly, they're, they're Texas, flyover yeah. states. Liverpool's Texas. Liverpool wants to be on its own. Texas wants to be on its own. The deep north. F- yeah, full of Mexicans. <laughs> it just works. <laughs> works. I knew for fucking no, Mexicans. Are Mexicans you're going, you're going talk to What? <laughs> you're the Mexican hour. Are the Mexicans... <laughs> are, are, are Mexicans are Irish people, aren't they? And we're quite happy to have them. If that's the difference between us and Texas, is Texas want to get rid of them. We're like, do you know what? Come over here and let's have a Guinness. Yeah. it's It works perfectly. Yeah. It's exactly... Texas is full of Mexican-themed pubs. <laughs> Which you know for a fact, because you know, yeah. you've been there loads. <laughs> Not a fucking another Mexican boozer. <laughs> What about what about an eatery? No, no, no not interested. There's loads of Mexicans walking around Texas like oh, they just don't know how to pour a Corona here. <laughs> trying to pour a fucking. <laughs> trying to put a sombrero in the fucking head. <laughs> it's, it's very small. It's, it's very intricate. This lime is in the way. Look at Speedy Gonzalez. This fucking thing. <laughs> I can't remember. Get a full Mexican when you wake up, if you're hungover. <laughs> a taco and burrito. Another taco uh, and burrito. Do you like my, uh, I, this is new merch. It's giving me Villarreal vibes nice. and they're the enemy at the minute. Yellow submarine. Um, so we've got some new merch up. We've got the we're, ma- we're massive, is it we're fucking massive Jimmy? Yeah. <laughs> we've got some we're fucking massive Jimmy oh, merch. Oh, we've got them over there actually. Give us a fucking choker them lad. We've also got some new have a word college stuff. And we've got uh, a from before callback bit of merch. All of these will be shown on Instagram shortly. Follow us on Instagram. What are we? What At are we? Pod. Fucking massive, Jimmy. And also the two tone uh, logo stuff. It's called logo icon. Have a word pod dot com I'm for trying all to our merch. It. These are fucking great. I love them. Yeah, I like and them. you can mix and match the colours. You know, like when there's a, a reason for a mosaic at a football ground, like there's often like. Like a, a message to put out and they, they yeah, someone's them. retiring. It's a the, the I'm trying to get the something. arena in Liverpool Centenary. to let us do a mosaic on the 9th of December saying we're fucking massive, Jimmy. Right, I'm currently talking to the promoter, right? But you, but what is it going to be made of? It's going to have to be made of something that's non slippy, isn't it? Flares, don't you just make out of paper, right? And then we'll give everyone a lighter on the way in and get them to light the paper on fire so no one can fall over it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They love that. We're worried about slipping hazards. Don't worry about that. We've got 10,000 people to bring lighters and burn things. God, because no one can slip on fire. Fact. It is a fact. It is. No one's ever slipped on fire, ever. That's why I said it. No one has slipped. And that's one of the great things about fire. Yeah. People love fire for that. You don't (laughs) slip on fire. You know? And you can trust fire like that. Yeah, if people come home to the house fire, you can go and just be like, look, look on the bright side. You're not going to fall over your house. <laughs> That's what people say. <laughs> people say, you've lost everything, but you haven't slipped and fallen you on, know, your house. on your house. <laughs> you know, could have lost everything with a bruised knee. <laughs> Worse. <laughs> it is though. If you, if Where's the plasters? In the house. Gone. <laughs> if your entire house is in flames, it's better to not have a sprained ankle. Yeah. I, I cannot argue with you. I don't know. Who, I don't know who would try. I don't, just it's all right. Cry, keep crying. But how do your legs feel? Fine. God, you can walk and find a new house. 
Oh, I went went bouldering yesterday. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> 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 oh, 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 Steve, you went so to singing African. lessons. La, 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 la. So he starts going bouldering. Carl comes every now and again, but he's on holiday. What? And bouldering. Stop having weird hobbies, you and Carl. What's bouldering? What's it? It's like it's... rock climbing, but it's a small wall and you've got like different colours. So like Do you mean climbing? Difficulties. You mean yeah, climbing? Yeah, climbing, yeah. But it's yeah, called yeah. bouldering. Oh, is it? Yeah. You, that sounds that's... like bowling, though, doesn't it? It does, but it's not. Yeah, but just call it climbing. No, it sounds like you've got big rocks and you roll them at things. But like Indiana climb. Jones style. Yeah, it does. Right. But... It's the one where there's like yellow, green, blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So at the minute I'm on blues. I've done an odd purple. That means anything. But it means to see, I'm going to show you. It means fuck all. <laughs> walking around and it's just a kid lying on the floor with a blanket on him. And I think he like popped his knee. Oh. And everyone's like, don't go near him. Like he's there. And he's just lying there with a the blanket on him. Don't go near him. Yeah, in case you're like, after the age to kick him or something. Don't I don't know. That's the rules of bouldering. He was Once there. you fail, you die alone. He was there for an hour. Right. Just lying there, so everyone's still climbing around them, yeah. and he just didn't move him. He keeps calling Isn't out it? for help. Well, it's his fault for popping his knee. <laughs> How old was he? Like 20s. Oh, so right, give okay. Him the people's mm-hmm. elbow. <laughs> yeah. Should have asked. You know? What's your name? Doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> you pop your knee. Well, at least your house isn't on fire. <laughs> <laughs> what would be worse? You can't slip over your house if you can't stand up. Fast. Absolutely, again. <laughs> Pure, unadulterated, <laughs> Rowie Fax. They call him Rowie Fax. Ah, uh, shall we do some questions? Go on. And different I miss you doing the questions. I can't do them, so I was letting the producers do them. And they're, you know, they're fine. And I forgot and then picked three weird questions. It's To be fair, Harry Robinson's doing a great job filtering out some mm. just repetition and just, and there's we get loads. And shite. Have a word pod at gmail.com. The easiest way to get stuff answered is on Patreon because we've now got so many patrons that when they message directly on Patreon, we sort of prioritise them because they're the people who get it. And I know there's public listeners and we appreciate you as well, but just patrons are better. Um, Ian Lewis says, Wag Wag Lids, given that the world is fucked and seconds from top... Oh, by the way, these might all be repeated because what I found in my absence, no one deletes everything, anything, sorry. Cool. So these could be just as yeah. soon as it sounds... Familiar. Wag wag lids. Given that the world is fucked and it's seconds from. No, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, you are a bloody joker, <laughs> isn't it? You there, mate. He's a bloody joker, isn't it? He said it. He knew it wasn't right, but he said it. Proper put me off my fucking track, isn't it? Given that the world is fucked and seconds from total annihilation at any time. All right, Ian. Um, imagine there's been a worldwide catastrophe nuclear war, asteroid hit, massive volcano, or. <laughs> Kebab shops all ran out of garlic sauce. Ian, you fucking japester. <laughs> you chaps have somehow survived. And now well, you're trying to make your way in a post-apocalyptic hellscape. Oh, Ian. What would each of you bring to the table? Is Dan secretly an expert in bushcraft? <laughs> Can Adam easily extract water from what's around him? That sort of shit. Personally, I'm a fat arsehole, so I'd probably just end up begging for dinner for the rest of my crew. Keeping up... Uh, keep up the good work. Can't wait for Dan to come to Glasgow later in the year. Thanks. Ian, you've already done Glasgow. Yes. All right, cool. I've got to go back. <laughs> I wasn't just a dick. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait to see uh, Dan in Glasgow. <laughs> I'm going to take us around him. Um, have I've, you got another Glasgow date? Yeah. And another Edinburgh date. My uh, Glasgow date is selling amazing. Cardiff is selling amazing. Colwyn Bay is as good as sold out. Uh, uh, Dublin, we've just added an extra show because Ooh. the first one sold out. Belfast, pull your fucking socks up. Really? Like, it's just been a little bit slow. It's been a little bit slow. I feel that's the only one of the non-English gigs that's a little slow. I'm really looking forward to doing comedy over the water. I'd love, Belfast is basically the first night of the tour. I'd love to not start on a quiet one. So, Belfast, where are you? Um... I think what I would bring to the table is a combination of intimidation and raw sexual magnetism. Which, in a post-apocalyptic world... <laughs> it's no, just... but there's going to be a few other groups, isn't there? And you want the men to fear me and the women to want to fuck me. Because then the men will go away and we'll get all the women. Right. Cool. So, you're not asked about food. You just want to shag. And we get all the women. And they can cook it. Cool. Like the good old days. Right. Who's getting the food in what? the old post-apocalyptic world? The men. Who are scared of me. Go and get me my fucking dinner. Right, okay. So you're, within a few days, you're some sort of totalitarian leader of a post-apocalyptic But a sound one. 
Nice one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he says thank you when you give him a food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is to stop some absolute like? This is my theory in a post-apocalyptic world that bouncers all group together yeah. and like UFC, you know, like a UFC gym, like Paddy the Baddy's gym. I, I'm sure there's some but Most bouncers are thick as fuck, aren't they? Yeah. So we could mind game them into doing what we need them to do. And you're on your own. <laughs> I'd like to go drinking in Liverpool ever again. <laughs> I strongly disagree. Carry on talking. All yours. No, they're just a bit stupid, aren't they? Like, not very intelligent, you know? You wouldn't want one of them on countdown. No. No, but, but fair enough. <laughs> Never going to be a special, is it? Have you seen eight out of ten does count, uh, eight out of ten cats does countdown? Have you seen bouncers do countdown? <laughs> Rachel Riley got punched. <laughs> Rough. John won this week with eleven. John. <laughs> John. Double figures we've had. Or two again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the target was four hundred and eleven. Me. <laughs> There's a literally a nine there. <laughs> Uh, I love a little number. I love a little number. I love a little one. I love a little one. Just all little ones. Okay, and that's what you got. I'm out. One, one, Don't one, do it. one, one, one. Got a, one. Got a counter. <laughs> Loads of people in. <laughs> one of my favourite things to do on this pod now is to just say something that makes you nervous. I'm not real. Like, it's just really makes me just. <laughs> so stupid, aren't they? <laughs> but it's just the way you've got this amazing, like, dangerous tendency trying to make me laugh, but just going against whole massive sways of the population. Uh, I've mentioned the police. Fuck the police! Fucking rap pig cunts! Yeah, but that, I actually meant that. Oh, gee, gee. Um, what would I bring? I don't know. You could juggle. I'm quite good. Fuck. <laughs> So I instantly learn how to do something in a post-apocalyptic UK that I can't do now. Yeah. Right. You have a lot of time in your hands while I'm punching people's heads in and shagging all the women. Oh, you I'm standing there juggling. Lots of balls in your hands as well. I'm just sticking you. You can juggle all the turnips that I go and get the fellas to get for. Turnips. <laughs> <laughs> what about tin goods? No. <laughs> turnips. Yeah, but the tins have run out. Right. Oh, were you talking like long term? I'm talking, you post up, you've got to start growing food again. Right. All the tins are gone. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Post-apocalyptic, I'm worried initially about the how it goes at first. Yeah. Because I'm probably one of the harder people in Sorgal, I imagine. It's just a load of... Cocker Sorgal? Nanas and fucking... I am the Cocker Sorgal. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a dog breed. <laughs> I am... <Cocker> um... <laughs> <laughs> what? What breed things? A Cocker Sorgal? He'll punch your fucking head in... <laughs> <laughs> Don't take it down to Blaken. It's a shit house in Blaken. Um, honestly, there's just a load of nanas around our way. There's one, one, one co-op, load of nanas, a pharmacy, a shit pub, and a load of Jehovah's on our street. Twat Jehovah's. So I'd be all right as long as no one came for an away leg, and then I'd be in trouble. Do you know what I mean? I think if everyone just fucked off and left Sorgal alone, I'd survive. I'd be all right. It'd be the big, big city mice that came calling. Maybe the Jehovah's is hard. I don't know. The Jehovah's probably love a post. No, they'd hate it. Because isn't that their whole thing? Genuinely, we have got three houses of Jehovah's Witnesses on our street. No, you have not. We've got the Jehovah's end. Did you knock on each other's houses? Like the away end. <laughs> Where is it? There's just... something that God wants you to know. No, they don't it's knock on each other's houses. Do they? Can I tell you about Joe? Oh yeah, fucking hell. N know you from church. Can I Stop tell you? knocking on number 22, <laughs> no bed. No. Have I they knocked on yours yet? No. Which is offensive, isn't it? Because I think Jehovah's are like, the world is going to end, and unless you're one of us, you're going to hell, and you're getting fucking bum rate forever. I think that's their whole thing, isn't it? The day of judgment is coming. I wish I'd researched this, because these cunts are two doors down. Seem lovely, dead friendly. Yeah, right next to Margie. No, no knock on. <laughs> no knock on. What? I said right next to Marjorie. <laughs> Three does that. Um, yeah, so that's a bit of a fuck you, isn't it? If I got a knock for, on my door now, and it would be a surprise in a tower block, but if I got a knock on now from uh, a Jehovah's Witness... <laughs> Jehovah's really trying to up the game. We're going penthouse to penthouse. <laughs> I, I'd actually have the conversation with them. I'd hear them out. Yeah. What do you know? I want to know what they've got to say. I want to know why it's they've been in, in a year. They moved in a year ago. Where have you been? Have you just decided we should be saved now? No, he's cunt. He's bought another car. Maybe th they think you're a Jehovah's Witness. Maybe you give off Jehovah vibes. 
What did he just assume? Well, there's yeah. three three houses here. Maybe he's they're got... just like, well, he's what? obviously a Jehovah's Witness, so we don't need no, to convert fuck him. Am I obviously a Jehovah's Witness? Maybe in disguise. Well, I don't even want. Maybe you're so the opposite of Jehovah's Witness that like he's triad. Has to be one. <laughs> Run the rest of it. Yeah, he's a clever, <laughs> smart. <laughs> Um, he's doing God's work, literally trying to get people fucking over to do the same. We don't take work home with you, do you? So it makes sense if they don't knock on yours. I don't. That's not- true. <clears throat> right. Those Jehovahs wouldn't knock on their own street, would they? So they they'd probably go other way, like like elsewhere to spread the word of God and joy. <laughs> See, I'm, and I need to look up what a Jehovah's Witness is. I genuinely don't know. <laughs> I think it's Day of Judgment, Doom. Unless you're part of the Jehovahs, you're fucked. What's the general belief? Right. They do not salute the national flag. Uh, they don't believe to have paid... Right. So they don't do Christmas, Easter, and birthdays. Oh, you fun cunts. What's that religion where they don't let you have any medicine? Yeah, it's Jehovah's. Is it? The blood transfusions. You're not allowed blood transfusions. Like so- Pacquiao as well, though. Is okay. Yeah, Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just made me nervous. I know cars away, but um, less racist. Yeah, they also refuse blood transfusions, even though that could be life saving. Imagine that. Imagine your fucking your kids on the fucking lazies. Imagine how much faith you've got to have in the fucking big fella on the chair. If your kids on his lazies and you're like, nah, he's not having any blood in. Mate, if I was a kid and I wasn't allowed to ce- celebrate birthdays or Christmases, I'd be like, I don't need a blood transfusion. I just want to end it now. <laughs> fucking find me a marble corner. Dunk. They can't kiss before marriage. They can fuck though. They're all fridges. They can finger. <laughs> they can fuck. <laughs> they can finger. Doesn't say they can't finger. They can fuck. They actually can fuck. They're just not allowed to suck each other off or do any oral. Bullshit. Bullshit. Where's the bell? Where's the bell? Suck each other off or do oral. You know when I said my mouth was for my marriage? That was from that. I swear to God. They can fuck, but they can't use their mouth for anything. Wow. No. <laughs> You're such a good liar. No. I reject it. Look it up. Oh, yeah, so the Jehovah's are all gangbanging down the road. As long as they don't kiss. Not on some mouth. <laughs> mm, witness the fitness Jehovah might see. <laughs> right. So no noshing. No noshing, no oral. No, no rimming. N- no. no nipple kisses. No nipple kisses. <laughs> no snogging. Oh, my God. But they can God. fuck each other in the ass. Right. So it's like... They like, can do double penetration, it's but like they morning, can't kiss. Right. It's like morning sex when you're on a hangover and you're like, oh, let's just do it, I'm horny. Don't kiss me in my breath, fucking hums. Yeah, that is basically yeah. a Jehovah's Witness life. They actually don't have to brush the teeth because no one ever gets close enough to their mouth. Right. Great. Call a 69, heaven and hell. Do you know when they say three out of four dentists recommend, like, Colgate? The fourth one's a Jehovah's Witness. Stay. Superb. Cheers, mate. Superb. Uh, it's not like when I said it was quite good and you completely yeah, missed I, it. I, was, I know, but I was just I was just enjoying that so much. So much. Yeah. Right, well these cunts aren't knocking on. Yeah. So I what a fuck you that is. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. What? You didn't hear what I said, did you? What? I said, you know the way three out of four dentists recommend Colgate? Yeah. The fourth one's a Jehovah's Witness. He's just like, don't brush your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to. Why would you need to brush your teeth? You're not gonna be kissing anyone. Unless you want the Lord to burn you forever. Be honest, have you made that up? No. How do you know? You didn't even know for definite about the blood transfusions. How do you know about the no no kissy sex? I don't know how I know it. Just know. You just know, do you? Yeah. Right. I might ask them. Do you want to come with me? Should we do a Patreon special where I knock on a Jehovah's win? <gasps> Fucking roll reversal. Yeah. Just knock on like, hi, I'm Dan from down the road. Have you ever thought about wanking loads and doing a bit of coke? <laughs> What about that? <laughs> Just lean in. <laughs> and they won't kiss you. Might start, might give you a little handy. Right, cool. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Laura love that. <laughs> Good question though, Ian. Really. Spells. It's not cheating if you get a hand job of a Jehovah's Witness on the doorstep. <laughs> it's not. I mean, yeah. It's not. No. On Your the... cock was just there. On the doorstep though. Yeah. If they've knocked on, not, not, they're not going to wipe me off, are they? If they've not even knocked on to save me, they're not going to be like, bloody hell. He's nope. here. I genuinely think they just think you're one of them. And they're like, do you know what? He's safe. Right. Or Steve's right, and they're waiting for the, like, the away leg Jehovah's Witness come to you because they just do all theirs in like fucking Aberdeen or whatever. Right. They commute up to Aberdeen. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't Jehovah on each other's doorstep. It's a great they, they, theory. It's too close to home, isn't it? Too close to home. Like they don't want to... 
I hope you don't it. want to knock on and be like, have you heard about the Lord? And you used to be like, aren't you from number 42? Yeah. So if I get a, like, ding dong, hey! <laughs> have you heard the, the word? Yeah. Is that what they say? Yeah, Loads exactly. of Geordie, Jehovah's Witness, bombing around Chester. Oh, Geordie, yeah. Good save. Good bloody save. Um, <laughs> ooh, talking about blowjobs. Talking about mouth pleasure. Guy Matthew says, wag wag lids. Harry's asked for some juicier questions, so I've decided I'm going to try and come up with a would you rather that'll stump old rowy bags. Would you rather only get one blowjob a year, but it's always the best blowjob you've ever had, meaning they gradually get better over the years. So it's one a year, and then they're like, oh, fucking 2022 was amazing. 2023, what? 2024, what? Or you get blowjobs on tap, but they gradually get worse with each one you receive. I wait your response. Cheers. That's from Guy. On tap? Because no matter how bad a blowjob gets, it's never going to be not good. Right. It's like it it's, No, but it's it like... Is, though. No, it's not. It's like watching Liverpool sort of struggle to a 1-0 win. It's still a win, isn't it? Still three points. If you have 10 blowjobs... No, how many blowjobs are you going to have a day? It's probably one, isn't it? One. Maybe two. Two. So one with breakfast and one before bed. <laughs> While you're brushing your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Just before. Let's get that toothpaste off your face. Oh, that's not toothpaste. <laughs> it's cum. Oh, the Jehovah's have turned off now. That's too far for them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, they can't do all. So you get two a day. Yeah. From, From before. before. <laughs> <laughs> you get two blowjobs a day. Within a year, the blow you've had seven hundred blowjobs, right? Yeah. How much worse is it going to be? Oh, it's April twenty twenty two. How bad could it be though? Because here's what you've got to. <laughs> you could like have the Tasmanian devil. Here's what you're forgetting though. You're forgetting about Chewing the nature on... of infinity. Go. <laughs> right. God, I mean, I can't. I expected to talk about this. <laughs> right. The universe is massive. Right. It goes on and on. But. There is only, you've got to give me this as a fact. Is this Stephen Hawking? Sort of, right? There is only so bad that a blowjob can get, right? Right. There is a limit on how bad it can be. Before it's what, not counted as a blowjob, it's just someone chewing on your balls. Exactly. Right. Right? So if I'm going to have two blowjobs a day forever, then the very last blowjob I ever have, which will be in years and years and years and years to come, the very last one I'll have will be that bad. Terrible. Right? So it's but, increments. But until then, it, it's very tiny increments of getting worse if I'm going to have two a day. So in a year's time, they're still going to be fucking amazing. Yeah. Because it, like you said, what, 700 in a year? I'm 30. Let's say I live to 80, right? Which with <laughs> medical science, let's hope for the best, right? So I've got 50 times 700 blowjobs, which is 35,000 blowjobs. Yeah. So at least 25,000 of them are going to be good. Right. It's only the last 10,000 that are going to be <laughs> shit. The last 10,000 when you're old. Yeah, you're but by like... then I'll be senile and I'll forget as soon as it's finished. Right. What would be... Mathematically, yeah. I'm fucking bang on the money here. That was Hawking as well. Yeah, it was. I remember him seeing it. Properties of George expanding Jackson. blowjobs. Yeah. <laughs> the nature of infinity means that it doesn't, it can't get worse very quickly. By and actually, the end. And actually, the more blowjobs I have, the more I have, the, the smaller the increments of getting worse. What about this human error? Do you know, what if just one day of fucking Maureen, is it the same bird? Sure. Yeah. Just accidentally, like, like bites you a little no, bit. No, 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 ah! no, 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 no. No, this is a would you rather, and within yeah. the parameters of would you rather, they get better with every, they get worse with every single one. And that the only way that can happen, with the nature of infinity, I mean, just keep saying it and I'll believe it more. Yeah. The nature <laughs> of infinity. <laughs> Stephen, what about... Uh, <laughs> Jordy Stephen. That's, I can't remember who, which comedian... Infinity. I can't remember which comedian does the Jordy Stephen Hawking. It must be Dave Johns. Because he's such a legend and I love him. But he just, he did, what? Right. He was like, he did the joint, like, the universe is massive. It goes on and on 
and it's always stuck with me. And now mentally, I remember, are you okay? No, we cannot see what you're thinking of seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I go, I got one blowjob. I deserve a medal of valor for oh, not I, saying. <laughs> well, I don't know what you didn't say. I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, okay, He's such a dick tease with that, isn't it? I'll take one phenomenal blow. Don't look at Steve directly in the eyes when you say that, Steve. <laughs> I'll take one phenomenal blowjob a year. You're the business manager now, Steve. You're earning good money. See you in June. Are you okay. Phenomenal self-control. It's the biggest self-edit I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know what's been edited out. Oh, dear. Do you know what I feel like right now? Has you Dane know when Jacan- you you know when picked the ball up and refused to put it into an empty net because Everton had a player down injured? <laughs> that's, that's what I've just done. I've gone, no, it's not fair. Right. Not fair on Paul Gerrard. We'll come back from the halftime break and like the Federation of International <laughs> Podcasting will have given Adam a fair play award. <gasps> Brilliant self-editing there. Uh, right, I'm going to go one phenomenal blowjob a year. Thank you. Stop looking at Steve when you say it. Steve. Go on, do another Just question. Recorder. One more? Yeah. Juan, Juan Moore. Would you rather have double intelligence but live half as long? Oh, the nature of infinity. Ooh. Or live double <laughs> as long and have half the intelligence. This isn't anything to do with the nature of infinity. I'm right. saying double as long. Twice. Or live double as long. <laughs> David Reed, I think we know which one you chose. Uh, would David you rather? Reed hard. He does find reading hard. He finds reading hard. I'd like to get that poke stars money. Mm, sneak. Not paid. So, would you rather have double the intelligence, but your life expectancy is half? So you're fucking well clever. <laughs> what are you like dead at fucking 64 <laughs> instead of 128 <laughs> or you're thick a bit thick but you're dead old so basically I live to 40 or 160 based on me 80 from before right so what's the like what's national average 80 yeah if that, you're yeah. from Dovey 74 yeah <laughs> felt really cunty sorry um, if you're from Dovey and asthmatic it's 62 <laughs> What would you? What's your mentally? What's your life expectancy? Eighty. I think that's the 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 target. Is that what's in your head? Yeah. Right. Cool. Since Shane Warne died, mine's come right down. <laughs> no, I think I'll hit eighty because by then there'll be medical marvels. Right. Really? There'll be like advances in medicine. Cool. You reckon the first person who's going to live to two hundred's already been born? Yeah. Could be me. But they can't even cure genital warts, so I don't even think, you know, like, I know, I know everyone's like, medical science, it'll sort everything out. Yeah. But, you know. But I think more people are concentrating on the living longer than the genital warts. I think that's the thing. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's why Macmillan's do adverts and, like, yeah. dick warts isn't a massive advert. <laughs> yeah. Sounded like Harry Potter-esque, didn't it? Um, I'd, I'd, ra- I'd rather live... Hmm, I 160 think- is too long. I don't want to live that old. So I don't want to be stupid at 160. Can I not just stay as I am and be be who I am and 80? Yeah, good. Good would you rather. Thank you, David Reed, for that. No, I just want to be me. <laughs> this is shit. I, um, I'm worried that half... Like, I'd like to be more intelligent. That'd be No, we, you know what? No. I don't think I would. I don't think I would. Really smart people. I know. Then you need a bit of thick. Yeah. That's why Michael, I can't remember his name exactly, but I had a kid on fucking antidepressants at school. He was so smart and he was like, oh, what is the point? We were like, oh, let's play football again. It was great being a bit thick. Just get on with it. Girls' tits are good, aren't they? He was like, yeah, yeah. what's the point? If I've got to pick one, I'm being thick till I'm 160. As long as I'm healthy all the way and I get it by so, Go see Grandad Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's still here. Couldn't find the door on his way out. <laughs> Brilliant. The whole ignorance is bliss. It's that any for your life. I think you want you want to hit that sweet spot of like you can work your life, but you're not like mm, existence is meaningless. You know, you but at the same time you don't want to be a constant head the ball like yeah, oh, I've yeah. done it again. I'm I'm thick to 160. 100 percent I'm worried that I'm dead at fifty two, Shane Warren. I need to stop. Okay, I need to look after myself. Yeah, if you go, if you go intelligence in half your life, you'd be dead now. 
Huh? You're not going to be 82, are you? My, if my you have energy drinks for breakfast? If my, I know, but they're so nice and they make me feel jittery. In a good way. Yeah, but you're not making 82 while this is your... Hang on. My, it's not half of... It's What's your life expectancy now? I'd say mine's 62. If you halve what I've got left, I'm gone at 51. That's not what they said. Yeah. It's half your life expectancy. No, from this point. Right, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that's different then. Then definitely thick and longer. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because I've got, well, 50 years left, so another 50 years on top of that. So 130. That's well better than 160. I'll take that. Oh, cool. He's in. Um, oh, can we just, just before we go for lunch, can we just give a shout out to the Dead Men Talking lads no. f- for the amazing thing they did on Patreon? They got over a thousand already. They gave them a, a big shout out to Patreon this week, so it's fairly co hosted, obviously. Oh, right, okay. But um, like, just for the public, because. Go and check them out. They got Dead a thousand patrons. Just horrific comedy. And I mean, like, they're watching the most horrific videos on the internet and showing it to their guests. And if you like that disgusting, uh, Really offensive, vile stuff, which I do. Uh, then go and check them out. It's Freddie and Rob. Bag. They're our boys. And it's great to see someone fucking nailing it on Patreon. We're going for the Nando's now. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. Let's talk about one of our sponsors today. It's NordVPN. Now, I don't know loads about VPNs, but the man to my left here is addicted to the internet and he's an expert. See, the fact that you don't use VPN for your private little Danny time is insane to me. It's the most secure way to save the internet. You can set your location to anywhere on the planet and that means you get access to like, you can change it to America, you get American Netflix. You can change it to like Saudi Arabia and you get to watch the Premier League football with the six Saudi Arabian commentators on. You get to watch Premier League football that's at three o'clock that you can't get over here. It's just a sick way of tricking your computer or any device into thinking you're anywhere in the world. You, I can't recommend it enough. And the fact that they're now a sponsor and I get a, a membership of NordVPN for free is, it's the, my favorite sponsor I've had so far, apart from Manscaped, because they help me shave my balls. The deal is a two-year deal plus one month for just 65 quid, $89, which is about 65 quid. It's an amazing deal. It is at nordvpn.com slash have a word, code word, have a word. Go and get it. Watch the footy. Watch whatever you want. Tell your computer where you are. He doesn't get to tell you where you are. My computer sometimes looks at me without my VPN. I'm like, hey, we're in Liverpool here. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're in Belarus. Nailed it. We're on. Do you know what? I think Stephen has really stepped into this producer role quite well. He's done all right, hasn't he? Doing Cheers, great. Right, mate. He's been feeling, the, feeling the pressure? He's doing the job of two men. Three? Three, three men. He's still doing his own job and Finns and Carls. Yeah. Because yeah. they're off gallivanting, smashing pussy all around the world. Yeah, that's what, definitely what uh, Carl's doing <laughs> with don't his feel, girlfriend. Don't feel pressure, me, mate. Do you know? <laughs> Bill Carl was it. telling me him and said I could have a gangbang the other night in the Maldives. Oh, hi. Yeah. 100% true. <laughs> That's the fact. Yeah. Paul's here. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Mama like that. I can't imagine Regal having a f- any kind of like threesome or anything. Can you not? He'd be like a bit like, no, he'd, he'd, he'd consider it hack, wouldn't he? He'd be like, a bit of a shine and everyone else get on with it and just watch. No, he'd just be like, just... I think what he'd do on this podcast, I, I he'd let I, everyone else do the main stuff and everyone yeah, yeah. he'd just put his dick in and be like, yeah. ah, <laughs> 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 no, again. 20 minutes. <laughs> he wouldn't tell us about it. No. I think he's a kinky little fucking Spaniard, yeah. isn't he? Do you reckon? Oh, yeah. They're into it. Do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Every time, it. every time we have a Bev, Serik is like, and then this, and like tries to tell me stuff. Carl's and there like Carl's he's like, got fucking <laughs> crack addiction and he's gone cold turkey. <laughs> I think they're into dirty things. He just doesn't talk about it. Yeah. Where is us? We'll just, us. what? Do you reckon she's ever shit on him? Oh, he's loving this. Yeah. I hope he's watching this. <laughs> Yeah. On his 42 and he can't edit it out because he's on holiday. Yay! <laughs> like, this would never normally make the cut. <laughs> do you think Seneca shits on Carl in the bedroom? What do you oh, think? Oh, poop. Oh, I hope not. No. Nah, I, re- I, I don't think he'd... I think he'd be more worried about... because I reckon he's got nice duvet covers. <laughs> <laughs> Carl's not a cleanly person. No, but I reckon he, he, he he's a person who'd buy a good, like, thread count. No, he isn't. No? No. Is he not? I no. would imagine he'd buy a good no. account. No, Seneca is. Seneca like, might be, but Carl like, would get... He'd have like Paris Carl would get fucking George fucking Home £2 bedsheets and be like, 
Sheets of sheet, lad. Well, then the, they're the ones yeah. you want to poo on. Saving up for the Maldives, yeah, yeah, aren't they? Yeah. So, sheets of sheet. <laughs> 100%. Every time someone tight? talks about all that. It's not tight, he's frugal. That's tight, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is it my round? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to love this episode. Remember we were going on the stag and Rob asked him for the money. He went, oh, uh, I've spent too much this week, so I don't want any more money coming out of my bank. And Rob was like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> the money's in your bank it's going to be the same money in your bank next week and he was like yeah, yeah I just don't want to spend any more money this week and I was like that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life yeah. oh he'd hit his quote already yeah. <laughs> it's his budget yeah. and the budget and that mental oh Carl <laughs> yeah, <but> oh <laughs> Carl I, I, like hope, do <laughs> I hope I hope you watch this I'm going to buy him some duvet covers for Christmas nice okay. Egyptian cotton oh f- 400 count oof yeah Stay me on a little bit. Though. 600. Is it? Yeah. I'm going to get him a 600. I want to make you You're look just like a cunt. Yeah, 1,200. <laughs> 12 Six million thread. There are 2,000 counts. Yeah, yeah. Get them in from China. China! <laughs> <laughs> I love I love spending money on bedding. It's just so nice. So nice. I've it's got a happy place. You need good bedding. Can't yeah. be fucking... I've got a sm- super king now, and it's fucking me. They're getting... Right. I have to order it. You never have them in shops, unless you're in Dunelm. <laughs> what a problem to have! It is. I told oh, it my bed's too fucking big, and there's only one shop that sells me fucking right, massive quilts. I love my bed. Quilts. You know, I love my bed. Right, I've always wanted a super king bed. Yeah. Always. Well, not always. You know what I mean, not when I was like three or nothing. But <laughs> in my adult life, as long as I can remember. What do you dream of, little Paul? Super king. Pretty is they? Whatever it takes. I remember when I was with my ex, <laughs> when my ex was pregnant with uh, with Alex. I fucking I ordered the Super King bed and I was fuck I had it on the calendar and everything I was fucking made up. I was counting down the days and I'm new I had new bed day written on the calendar in the kitchen and when new bed day came I dragged the old bed into the garden and ceremonially smashed it to bits with my feet, laughing my head off. Just smashed it to complete smithereens, the whole thing. And then the fella turned up with the bed, looked and went, It's not going up there either. <laughs> and I was like, What do you mean? And he went, Did you not measure? I went I went, I ordered it online. He was like, Yeah, you should have uh, should have, should have went to shop and uh, got them to come and measure up because that's not going up them stairs. And I was like, well, what do we do? We'll have to take it back. We'll have to get a king size one. And I went, what, do you just go back and get a king size one? He went, no, you got to order. It's like 12 week leading. So I had to go and drag the old bed out of the garden. Was <laughs> I had to drag a mattress in and it being rain and I had to drag the mattress back in, dry it with a hairdryer. And my pregnant ex-wife had to sleep on a fucking <laughs> mattress on the floor for the last like fucking three months of her pregnancy. It wasn't a happy time. <laughs> and you say you didn't last. <laughs> I think that's what the hair dryer. The hair dryer. That was actually, it was in the divorce papers as a fucking. Fighter, <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> Sell one of your watches, kid, for Bedgate. <laughs> How big is it now? Man, if that was you then. Where are you at now? Bed no, so you're I'm like on Shaq. Super King now. I'm on Super King that time. That's six the biggest six, is California foot, King bed, isn't it? Six foot by six foot. Like the famous Rihanna song. Yeah. I literally, you're just saying words. I don't know how big a it is. California Calif- King bed is essentially like for, from like wall to wall in here. It must here. be eight foot. Right. Because yeah. Super King's three pillows wide, isn't it? Imagine two dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> so I measure things. Pillows. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. We're not getting up these stairs. That's two and a half pillows that tall. Be, hey, for the bed, man, that would be a reasonable way to measure it. It would. It would. How many cushions, though? All oh, right. Don't do metric. Um, yeah, I've had the same thing with a Super King bed. Mm. Moved into a house. I was like, we're doing it. I got a cheap one and had to sort of like fold it like a fucking burrito up the stairs. It's fucked. Can we just rewind a second? Fold it like a burrito. Those things that you fold, you know? Burritos. <laughs> Just, I'm always folding burritos, me. I, I get a burrito and I'm like, do you know what? Did I mean, do you fold a burrito to wrap it? And then you wrap it, don't you? Oh. You know, fold. You have to fold is it. it taco a, is it taco yeah, a fold? Taco, yeah. Yeah. Just, we'll, I'm trying to back it up then, but hey, we'll, we'll edit it out. We'll yeah. edit. No, do your line again. Go on. I, <clears throat> I remember also getting a bed and it being, the stairs were only two <laughs> pillows tall and I had to... Four foot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a small house. <laughs> and I... Shut This is my line. Whose line is it, man? You and I had to fold... <laughs> You've stepped all over my line. And I had to fold it like a taco. You don't really fold tacos, oh. though, do you? Oh, they're go already, fuck yeah. yourself, They're already bro. sort of in it. expensive as a soft taco. Jürgen yeah, said to me that you're a pedo. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you, mate. You too, mate. It's great to see you. Never mind about that divorce. You're getting married soon, aren't you? Yeah, married three weeks... <laughs> 
Are you mixing? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, it? Helen! <laughs> oh no, no. I don't put that in. She watches this. She watches yeah, it. Hi, Helen. Do not edit that. I was be really funny. <laughs> Helen got in touch with you, and she was like, "I'm worried about Dan and his wife. Yeah. They don't sleep. They sleep separately." It's the weirdest message ever. You get like Paul Smith message. You go, Look, weird one, but my ex is worried about you and your missus. You're like, okay, <laughs> that's normal. I got a message yesterday. On uh, Twitter, this might be the weirdest one I've ever had. I'm just going to read it out to you. Uh, I couldn't believe it was real. So, <laughs> hello, mate. Mad request this. We went to school with each other, right? I was a few years older, so that means we didn't go to school together, doesn't it? Mm. We, we went to the same school and go to school together because you were older. I love your podcast. My ex bear got me into it and she's banging into it. Listen, I want her back. Can you record a voice note for me? Just saying Andy loves you and he's sorry. All he wants is to sort things oh. out. Her name's oh. Charlotte. Oh, and by the way, we have the same barber. Oh my Just... God. By the... <laughs> it's, it's funny that you bring that oh. oh, It's funny that you bring that up because I've been fucking... commanded. I've just been to get my hair cut. He's told me off and not going in to get my hair cut. I've been, uh, he's, he's demanded that I um, ask you what the fuck's going on. Anthony is very upset with you. Yeah. He said, what? He said that you've, uh, you've let yourself down. So I moved into town, haven't I? And I've been on tour. Yeah. Uh, and West Derby, although it's like, it's in Liverpool. So if, you go to the same barbers? We've had the same, we've had the, we've same, had the bar same barber shop for years. And I love same as fucking Freaky. Yeah. And uh, I, I just haven't, when I, whenever I've had time to get a haircut, it's been like, I've got an hour before I'm leaving town. I've had it cut in other He's cities. He's fuming, you know. Of course he is. It's, it's like, I swear to God, he didn't shut up about it while I was in there. Of course he is. And and, he, yeah. you know, it, and oh. he's telling everyone that comes in. Cheating on your barber is, is, is bang out of order. That's bad. And Anthony, I know you watch it sometimes, and you'll probably watch and, this and, one. And apparently you said, because he said, now nah, that you moved into town, you're going to get a different barber. And you said, nah, lad, all my family oh. lives down here. I'm loyal. Yeah. <gasps> I did say that. Oh, lie to his face. Yeah. I did lie to his face because it was easier than sitting there silently. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were the options. He's not happy at all, you know. He's not going to be happy. Cheating on your barber's <laughs> a big thing. And I've been a whore. I've been, been fucking everywhere. other barbers in town. He's a, he's a bad one to cheat because he's not a quiet barber either. No, 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 he's not. <laughs> um, I'll be back soon, and. <laughs> I don't no know. one could say it like you, and that's the problem, actually. Uh, <laughs> he, he, said, well, he, he told me to tell you that you're going to have to pay a premium now to the, for him to fix whoever's fucked your head up. Okay, well, then I won't be back. Mm. Yeah. I'll keep going to the, the fancy one in town. <laughs> you going, cut the they steamed me face while they shaved Ooh. me beard. He to, never did that. Although I did have he to never admit, made me feel that good. I did have to admit, I got, cause I went and got my hair cut in Turkey, uh -huh. and he done that waxing thing. Yeah, you know, put, like, I didn't. I didn't know what he was gonna do. He just went and pointed at me ear, and I was like, and then he just got this like, and then he just stuck like smashed it into me ear. Then he put some on my cheek, covered my nose in it, done my other ear, and then stuck two things up my nose. And Laz was like, "This is amazing." You do look. You do look very Mate, hair free. I, I, but I was like, I, I, I don't like. I don't want him to rip this off. But when he did, it wasn't that bad. And I swear to God, it took about a stone off my face. I don't know what the fuck was in my face. <laughs> and I felt so fresh. And now I said to Joe, like, you're going to have to learn to do that, mate, or I might have to... Um, Go to a For a Turkish fella. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a, a coloured putty. It's just candle it's... wax, I think. No. It's just hot, like, candle wax. So he smears it all on, and then it goes hard, and then he just goes fuck off and rips it out. So they put, it takes like... all the hairs and the blackheads and everything out of everywhere. Yeah, yeah. they put, like, three earbuds in, so they've yeah, got yeah. purchase. And then he just goes fuck off. Makes for some phenomenal... Like especially if they're yeah. of sort of thinned descent, they have to do all. They have to do everywhere, don't yeah. they? Literally all around. I've seen. I've seen the full <laughs> up the arse. Yeah, <laughs> you can you can tell someone who goes to a Turkish barber's by their beard because like yeah, the lines. it's it's so Stunned unbelievably them. straight. Yeah. It's like they've done it with like fucking a, like a a level. Like they've got one of those fucking spirit mate. laser spirit yeah, levels yeah. where it like puts a straight line. Yeah, but I think it looks a little bit. Yeah, you look like Action Man, hundred percent. Yeah. Like the girls who draw on like their I eyebrows. I fucking care the shaksha, <laughs> Yes, I have definite beard. Beard stop here, beard start there. Don't like it. Too much. I like a bit of fade. Yeah. What happens if the buds break and you just got waxed in your nose? How do you get do out a then? big blow. You have to go to the Aussie. Yeah. The Turkish hospital. Turkish hospital. <laughs> What's one of them? And then they put a wick in it and just light it and they're like, 48 hours, you'll be fine, mate. 
And also, it's going to smell of lavender up there. So, fuck you. <laughs> it's an energy crisis. <laughs> Wee Willy Winky. Uh, what car have you come in today? Bentley. Come in your Bentley today. Good move, that, because we've choice. got some speed bumps around here I, in your I Lamborghini. I wouldn't come anywhere near there with, in that Lambo. Why? Just bring the mic closer spe- to you. Them speed bumps are fucking pathetic. And it's not... If people think you can't go over speed bumps in a Lambo, you can, because you can press a button and lift the nose up. It's fine. But they would absolutely wreck it. You said to me you were thinking about getting rid of the Lambo. I am. Why? Because since I got that Bentley, it's I have to make an effort to drive this Lambo, <laughs> which is the fucking biggest first world problem ever. Jeez, it's I, I honestly me wish and I used could to show try and this time video. our walks to the bus stop yeah. together. <laughs> I honestly, I wish I could show this video to you like ten years ago. What? <laughs> but uh, sat here with watches so, bigger than our head, lad. Tell me about your Lambo problems, lads. <laughs> yeah, very We're- relatable, because a lot of people have cars. <laughs> hey, you lot no speed bumps. Relatable. <laughs> so fucking, uh, I, I put a picture of me, just uh, just as a jokey, like, put a picture of me, like, putting petrol in going, I see these people more than my family, because it's obviously drinks fucking juice. Mm. Some fellow went fucking mad at me, saying I was uh, taking the piss out of the poor. And <laughs> I was like, how am I only going on about fucking... People get very angry on the internet, though. He apologise, though, to be fair. Of course, because he's yeah. having a bad day. I'm yeah. getting to that point where people who, like, when they're, like, aggressive or angry on Twitter or whatever, I'm trying my best to just be overly nice to them. Yeah, and they always break. Yeah. But sometimes, if I'm in a bad mood, then I'll fucking go back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, um, when the bad gimp comes out. Yeah, you bad gimp. Gotta be careful now, though, because you say anything bad back on Instagram, just goes, you but you bullying. Yeah. One of my, I got a video took down the other day of me doing crowd work. Just crowd work, and it wasn't even that bad. Got took down for bullying, and I was like, that's the end of me, that. That starts happening. <laughs> I'm fucked. I'll pay for Bentleys I'm with bullying. Fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do this to me. Yeah, scared the fuck out of me. Yeah, because out of context, crowd work. Yeah, it's bullying. It's absolutely like picking someone out and yeah. then going, what'd you do? Look at what you're wearing. Yeah. Ah. Oh, you big fat goth. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> Fucking wool cunt. <laughs> That's actually, well, mate, you know I mean? that's actually perfectly in context. <laughs> I love the crowd work. <laughs> you fucking stupid twat. <laughs> Next. That's how that's, that's, that's 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> you fat bull goth. <laughs> Next. <laughs> maybe maybe you shouldn't have booked a gig in Warrington. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were telling us before, uh, you nearly got in a lot of trouble with your Lamborghini. One well, of the reasons you get rid of it is because you keep speeding in it. Well, but accidentally. Uh, no, it's not accidentally. It's because I'm a fucking arsehole, egotistical prick. And whenever some fucking little dickhead in a fucking golf fucking GTI pulls up and starts revving next to me. I go, well, fuck you then. And I started racing some cunt at like half 11 at night past the Royal Hospital. Went up Islington round. But you've got a Lambo against the golf. Like, do you yeah, think? Yeah, but I still want to, sh- I want him to know I'm faster because he thinks he's but he, faster. No, he doesn't though, does he? He does. No. What you're doing there is the same as like you saying Bolt turning up at a school sports day and being like fucking beating all you cunts. Yeah, yeah thinking, look, this five year old dude stretches. But I bet yeah, you saying Bolt if you if he was at a school sports day and it was all the dads versus each other, you saying Bolt would still go. I'm gonna win this. I might yeah. not go me full fucking nine point six seconds, yeah. but I'm gonna I'm I'm doing a solid yeah. ten seconds. As soon run. as some Graham got some spikes out, yeah, you saying he'd be like, oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have to go up to third gear today. Yeah, yeah. As soon as some dad turned, turned up in Lycra. take the piss out of you. So you I can't. thought, fuck it. So, but then, so I've come round and I've gone back on Serge Lane and then I just saw, saw this copper come up behind me. But this is the third time I've been stopped lately and I've, I've, never, I've only been stopped one other time in my life in my car. Do this, I'll tell you what, do this time in a second. It's like, so he p- pulls up behind me and then I realised I had two ounces of weed in my boot. <laughs> so I'm like... <laughs> I could go to fuck. I could go to prison. That's yeah. prison time, isn't it? That's prison time, yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, what the fuck are you doing? So he follows me right down Edge Lane, pulls me over, comes up, he's fuming. He's like, why are we racing your mate? And I was like, uh, and he went, don't, don't lie to me. And I went, oh yeah, I was just being daft, me, sorry. And he took all my details and that. And I was thinking, fucking hell. And he went, under section 59, dangerous driving, I can seize the car. Like he was speeding, and that's like points and that. But like under section 59 or whatever it was, I can seize the car. And I was like, fuck, if they seize this car. One, I've lost the car, and two, they're going to find two ounces of weed in the boot. <laughs> and then he went, he, he, he went, where have you come from? And I went, oh, I've just done some shows. Sorry, I've just been work. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. This is not true. This is all a new, new material for my next tour, which is uh, on sale in three weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Adam wrote a code UK forward slash shows. <laughs> so 
he, he went, oh, I, I thought that was you. And then he just, he went, oh, yeah. I seen when the police all turned up and I, in lockdown and start, and like we're trying to get in. It was funny that way. I went, oh, I went, oh, is, is this karma for that? Is it? It's like joking around with him. And he went, no, 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 I thought it was funny. And then he was fine. He went, oh, I'm going to let you off with the warning now. And I was thinking, fucking hell, nice one. So then he let me off, but I thought, That's, I'm running out of lives here. Because the, like the week before I got stopped, taking, you no know, Chelsea from one of the show managers in work, Chelsea. Love Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. she's sound. She's pregnant. Yeah. So I'm driving past Goodison Park, taking her home. Yeah. And I know I wasn't going fast. Yeah, but I, I know I wasn't going fast because I had a pregnant woman in the car. So yeah. I wasn't like, going mad. So blue lights behind me. And I'm like, was I going fast then? She went, I don't think so. But it's so easy to just creep up to 40 in that car. Yeah, because yeah. it's not it's, meant to do any leads, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's, you touch it and it's doing. So I was at like, 40, oh, it's going, go on, Paul, do <laughs> it. I'd Come rather, on. you know what I mean? If you get, it, it, I feel like it's worse getting stopped doing 40, you know what I mean, in a 30, because you're like, it's not even enough to be fucking good speed. Yeah, yeah, I don't think the police see it like that. No. I think <laughs> if they if you do 75 in a 30, they think that's much yeah, worse, don't angry, they? They get angry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he's, he comes to me and he went, any reason you were revving so much, right? And I was like, what do you mean? He went, like a day from a few streets away. I went, it's just a loud car, you know. Now I know, I in a Lambo, you can take, it's got three settings, so you can have Strada, which is street, it's got, it's got, um, what is it? it's got co Strada, Sport and Corsa. So in Sport and Corsa, it opens the exhaust, so it pops and it sounds a lot better. So I just have it in Sport. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. So it goes and pops all over the place and sounds that good, right? But you can turn that off. So it's a little bit quieter. It's still loud, but it's a bit quieter. But I didn't want to tell him that because then it makes it look like I've done it on purpose. So I went, it's just a loud car, you know. And he was like, so he, again, he stuck on me details. And he, and he went, like, he went, uh, it's something about uh, the noise pollution or something. He went, again, he was like, uh, you can seize the car. And I was like, are you sure? And he went, because I, I, I don't know what to do here, mate, because when I turn this car back on, it's going to be that loud again. And he was like, and then he went, Looked at me funny, he went, you from the comedy club? I went, yeah, he went, ah, oh, mate, I watch your videos all the time, you think you're dead funny? I went, I'm glad you said that, mate, because I'm trying not to take the piss here, but you just told me to turn my car down. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of laughed a little bit, right? <laughs> and he went, oh, yeah, I see what you're saying, yeah. I went, I don't know what to do about it. He went, no, all right, yeah, I get, I get your point. He went, just, just be, a bit, be, be a bit more safe. And I went, all right, yeah. So as I thought, I'll make a joke. So as he was walking away, I went, I'm going to be honest with you, mate. I'm just going to wait till I can't see it again and go down fast again, right? And he kind of like laughed it off, but then he got in the car. So I've turned the car back on and went to go, but I didn't put it in gear. And I just went, <laughs> and, just it as la I, and I was like, oh, and Chelsea went, oh, fucking hell. And then he just followed me for like the rest of the way back to his. But so I had to keep the exhaust open because because I was thinking I'll just turn the exhaust off so I don't give a fuck now. So I had to keep it up. So I had to just try. You had to keep it loud. I had to keep it loud. Otherwise, it would have looked like I was being a cunt. Hang on, he has turned it down. Yeah, <laughs> he could turn his car down. <laughs> Did you think the police are just like, I'm just going to pull over that Lamborghini for the fuck of it? Of course they are. Yeah, it's it. Definitely. Pig cunts, mate. Scum. <laughs> the what? lowest of the low. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you know what, though? It's like, I get pulled so much by police now. And, and then, that's what I'm saying. I'm running out of lives because I've took the piss out of the police so much. So many, it must get passed around the police stations, so they all know who I am. So I, I get to just get stopped. Yeah, they, yeah, they definitely they do. Though. For, like selfies and stuff. <laughs> and I, I saw, I, I was with, I was going back. Where was it? Like fucking, I can't even remember. I was going back. I was going. I think it was Stoke or somewhere, some trick. Oh, crew, sorry, crew train station. I've come <laughs> up. One of them British transport police come up and went, "Oh, can I have a picture, right?" And I was with Tom, oh, Tom Evans, who yeah. was doing me tour managing. And I went to, oh, fuck it. I was saying, I went, mate. I'll be honest, make sure no one sees though, because it's bad for my reputation. And it, they just laugh it off. So I just talked to them like the knobheads, right? And he was like, Can I have a picture? Are you sure it's all right? I went, It's all right, but you can't say it. You've got loads of drugs on me. Like that. And Tom's just going, What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Why? Well, he's not going to fucking do that, is he? I'd love it, it if he did great. that. Just feels great. But then when that happened, I was like, I'm running out of lives here. I'm running out of lives. I need to get rid of this before. So you're going to sell it? Well, Lambo offered me fuck it. So, because they can't get cars back in. What conversation am I having with one of his mates? He wanted to buy it back. I'm a guinea if I was to buy it back off me at a profit. You know what I mean? But, just yeah, so I'll do. make money on it. So I was like, if you can do that, then. Because it's just sat on me driving, that Bentley's faster. <laughs> it isn't faster. It is. What? It's not. It's 0.2 of a second slower to 60, but it's, it's 15 miles an hour faster, top speed. 
That's a tough rapper. shade. It's 117. Yeah. And the hour. police will be annoyed if you do that near Goodison. But if one, you go past the police at 217 mile an hour, they're not even going to bother trying with to With that change, one, you can drive it normally as well. What? It doesn't. It feels all right to drive normally as well. No, but like what I'm saying is, if you were on the motorway and there's a fucking busy car, right? Yeah. And you went past at 217 miles an hour, <laughs> he's not going. Well, let's get after him. Because <laughs> by the time he's thought, I should probably chase him. You're already in fucking Newcastle. Well, that's what some kid went to me. Yeah, but you're in a in a Lambo. Just do what you want because they never catch you. And I was like, yeah, but it's an orange Lambo. Yeah. There's not that many. <laughs> do, you, do you know? Do you know <laughs> the police? The police aren't fuck. If only there were other cars the police were in. If only we. Oh, had... that's not two hundred seventeen. But there's just me here. You just have to go orange Lamborghini into a database, and my address would just pop up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just drive to mine away for me. Gin- <laughs> that's how fast I'm Ginger lad, go. ginger lad, orange Lambo. You fucking know him. <laughs> with Joker on the license plate. <laughs> oh yeah, the two hundred seventeen miles an hour. They're gonna see that license plate <laughs> clear yeah. as day. Yeah, yeah. That was Paul Smith in his fucking Lambo. I love you. I love your theory. You're going so fast, they can't stop you. They can't. Fact. Have you ever driven that fast though? No, I don't like it. Oh man, if I get up, I got, I, I've what, been up to a hundred accidentally. A hundred, and I was like, no, nah, I don't like this. He's quite sensible, speed wise. He's either the hundreds on the way. Allegedly, I got when I got that Lambo. I got I got we went on a bull run for November, so like I met all these Lambos and fucking Sandbach services. Like thirty of them there that we driving down to Oxford to meet like Sandbach Peter Falcon Convention of twenty twenty one. What mate, did I've you never just say? Seen. You met a load of Lambos, Lamborghini yeah. drivers in Sandbach. Sandbach to drive down to Oxford to then go to Blenheim Palace where there was like every Lambo. There was like, there was like four hundred Lamborghinis. It was mad. It was amazing. But I got onto the fucking M six and I've never seen anything like it. I did like, that actually in December with my Sportage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We all Are messing on scare. Yeah. Was it Charnet Are Richard? You were flying past or something? <laughs> yeah, Charnet Richard services. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And we all drove to Carlisle. All the kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. We all drove to Carlisle. <laughs> Real crack when you yeah, got up we there. Went to, we went to Pizza Express in Carlisle. Try and find someone who isn't called Graham. <laughs> and uh, came back. <laughs> It was great. It was really good fun. <laughs> uh, we've got a uh, booking for 80 for Kia. Next one. Oh, the sportage table. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Every oh. year. It must be like a Kia club, though. There isn't. There isn't. It must be. There Kia isn't. Club. You have two kids. You Stay, give, you give up a little. There's no, a there's club. not. Defo. It's called Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> Al Kia. <laughs> the Lambo Club. What were the people like? As you would expect. I mean, oh. is it a load of fucking Tories? No, not particularly. No, because I suppose they're all like fucking like Land Rovers, aren't they? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Hey? There was a lot no, of I don't mean Range Rovers. <laughs> I mean like... Yeah, there's a lot of different people. That, I mean, so, like fucking a lot of midlife crises, is there, like, including me. <laughs> I'm right. So, yeah, no one of healthy I mind know is like... I call it a midlife crisis, because if, if what I'm experiencing is a midlife crisis, it's not a crisis, it's a fucking belter. I don't know why they call it like because what do you mean the fact that you've well, like, bought a Lambo a Bentley and stuff like, doing as many get drugs a sports as... car and get a younger woman yeah and that's fucking great isn't it that's not a crisis it it depends what happens at the end of it though doesn't it well oh yeah I haven't reached that bit yeah yeah you haven't reached that bit the car thing is such a lazy oh you're having a midlife crisis you just got more money because yeah. you're in your early forties yeah that's what it is I'd have had a dickhead car at twenty five I was oh, fucking yeah. skint <laughs> I couldn't afford it I had a fucking Ford Escort. And that's the best I could afford. Yeah. People are like, you just got that because it's a midlife crisis. No, it's not. No. It's just the first time I've got expendable income. Plus I've bought a BMW Z4. So <laughs> not quite as valid in the conversation. Is that haven't... Z4 yours outside? Yeah. That's I, haven't nice. met, I haven't met up with any of the Z4 club. <laughs> See you at Sandbatch, boys. I was looking at that before. I'm parked, like, I'm parked almost next to it. Oh, can't wait to drive off. <laughs> 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 you excited about getting married? I am, you know. Three weeks today. Three weeks today. Three Get married weeks. on a Friday. Why? Well, because the wedding got rescheduled, didn't it? Yes. From September, so we had to do... Because, really, Jay, I think we were supposed to get married on a fucking Monday or Tuesday or something, because I... Oh, you made to comics. Yeah. So I... Because she was like, oh, my family's on comics, and I was like, yeah, but... Did I tell you, because he's asked me to be master of ceremonies at his wedding. And I wanted to say... Who's drinking? Well, I wanted to say, give us a cheer if you've been to one of Paul's weddings before. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I asked, but I said, you're going to have to ask Loz. Has it been vetoed? It's been vetoed. Oh, yeah. come oh, on, Only because I, Do you know what? I, my, she knows my bitch. She's got a great sense of humour, but I think with this day, 
she's she's just like, I'm not fucking about with her. Yeah. And it, it was a shame if you haven't been before. Come on, lads. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't there last time. <laughs> Okay, going to do a bit of crowd work, you <laughs> fat goth wolf. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> You're uh, a great mate of honor, love. Have you been to uh, suit yet? No. Uh, mate, Rob Summers nearly never go on, you know. Oh, it was really funny. I, I went to match her on Tuesday. So, Rob, you, you've got... To be fair to Rob, right? Paul's gone to a suit shop in... Is it Manchester? It's Salford, yeah. Right. But it's not a tailor's. It's just a... We've I got what we've got. I didn't know this at the time. What? I didn't know this at the time. That's, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> but that doesn't make this any less ridiculous, okay? <laughs> so they've just got what they've got. And Paul's picked the suit and was like, right, everyone's going to get that suit. So Rob Thomas went in and was like, uh, I'm usually like a 44, uh, but what, what have you got? Just give me the fat bastard size. And she went, well, I'll get a 46. And we'll see how, like, well, that should definitely fit. And it didn't. And he's like, these are too small, love. And she was like, well, that is all we sell. I've given you the biggest ones. And he went, so what do we do now then? And she said, I don't know. <laughs> and what I said to him is the best thing about that is that means you're the fattest person she's ever dealt with <laughs> because this isn't a situation she's ever been in before. <laughs> like no one has ever, no one has ever not fit into the pants because she doesn't know what protocol is. She doesn't know what the next step is. So what he's had to do what he's had to do is just buy the pants. And I went to match the other night. I was like, I got the before. I was like, do you want a pint? And he was like, no, lad. Get me a black tea. And I was like, they don't do black tea. It's already got like milk powder in the cup. It's how they do it at Anfield. I was like, and he's like, oh, go ahead, I'll have a white tea then. And I was like, the fuck's wrong with you? And he's like, I need to fucking fit in these pants, lad. <laughs> so Rob Thomas at the minute is nil by mouth oh. because he's trying to fit in a suit so for sweet. your fucking wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what though? I've been asking him to go for ages, right? Because I, I wanted him and Binti to go because they're the fucking outliers. He went with Binti, know? so I'm thinking if you two and the go, pants, they're not long Binti, enough for Binti. They're, not, <laughs> they're the outliers, so yeah. forth. If we're all right there, we're all right with everyone. Binti's wearing three quarters because <laughs> he went. These are not long enough, love. And she was like, again, they're the longest we do. <laughs> So Rob what Thomas, do we do now? I don't know. Rob Thomas has done clothes and you can see all of Binti's socks. Oh, it's fucking <laughs> wonderful. Have you done this on purpose? <laughs> no, but it's a happy accident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Binti the clown does have a ring to it. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. He's rang because he was calling me and they were both clearly fuming and I was like, I was trying to take them seriously because, but I was like, <laughs> on the phone just trying not to fucking laugh my head off because I was like, well, it's funny, isn't it? Rob Thomas asked them what uh, sweatshop they get them made in China because he was going to try and get his own 48 or 50 inch pants on DH Gate. Oh. I was like, that is a special level of fat when you've got to get your wedding pants <laughs> imported. I would love to be in the factory when they got that order through. Like, <laughs> oh he's going to get God. material. He's going to take his we waistcoat. We eat for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> Mr. Rob Thomas. <laughs> he is a very wealthy man. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna. The take, king of England. He's gonna take his, uh, <laughs> he's gonna take his waistcoat and get pieces of material put in the back of it. Yeah, because the waistcoat doesn't li literally goes nowhere near him. He said the jacket is all right, and once he's lost a bit of weight, oh. the jacket will be perfect. Wow. I might, I might offer to do it for him and go, yeah, let me take care of that, right? And then just put like fucking caution bits in it or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> just like the actual material, just place cordon tape. <laughs> God, he'd fucking kill me. Just gingham. <laughs> Two strips of gingham. <laughs> Lovely tablecloth there. So, so. How many, uh, how many boys you got in the wedding party? Well, this is, it is, it's just bring that mic. It's, it's in a weird Sorry. angle. The, the, it, it, it escalated a little bit. So I've done the total opposite to your last wedding. Well, I, your last wedding was just me and Blair. She got involved and she was like, well, you like, because I was just going to do like you and Blair again. Yeah. But then she was like, oh, what about like Jack and that? And I was like, and it, and it, it just fucking escalated to like 12. So that's why I went to this place. Because Jamie Sutherland got a suit off them because he does all the footy players. Yeah. So we went, and the suit was nice. And I went, oh, that's nice. So we went, messaged them. And and then when I looked, I know Lee Trundle because he's yeah. mates with me, mate. Yeah. So I was, I messaged Lee Trundle. Do you know this guy? Like Lee Trundle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've trained and he goes to the gym by man when he's up. So he was like, oh, I'll message him for you. So he messaged the guy and was like, so we went, I'll do you some discounts. So I was like, I need like 12 suits. Yeah. So, so I thought, oh, sweet, I'll go there. But then when I got there, I didn't know it wasn't like a tailor's or nothing. You need yeah. 12 and a but half. You're all right if you're a normal-sized human being. Cool. It's fine. Like, no one else had the bother. 
What? So what you're saying there is Rob Thomas is abnormal. Nobody's in size. big and big, any like a fridge. He's, he's beautiful. He's he's beautiful. Be, we love you, Rob. He carries it very well. Oh, we love him. And he's yeah, and it looks like he belongs that big. Do you know what I mean? It suits him, but like. I just <laughs> All biggest. of us just got the fear. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm really enjoying oh, it. I haven't said anything. He needs a California mattress, doesn't he? <laughs> California king. He needs a California du- duvet cover. No, but he, I, it is very sweet that he's he's dieting down for the wedding. And he wants to cut down a bit. That's, That's why sweet. I haven't got, him, got mine fitted yet. Because I want to be a little bit slimmer. I've been doing, you know, a little gradual, just drinking loads of ale and not eating. Yeah, all them athletic greens. <laughs> That'll yeah. help. That'll really help. I threw them up. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they will help. So. Just What's Laurie doing? So funny. she's obviously vetoed that joke, which I understand. Cause it's a good joke. Well, she but said women, the, some of her family won't get it. Yeah, I think they'd be fine. I do as well. I think it's just girls being like, please don't fuck up my big day. Yeah, I'm really yeah, looking yeah. I will think of another one and I'll make it worse now. I mean, you'll have her to deal with and I wouldn't want to be here if you start. If is you she, her off on that day. she got a big wedding, but she got loads of the gal them. Because I've seen her pictures <laughs> she, from the yeah, fucking... Yeah, so they've got like, <laughs> the gal. Like There's eight, a menace in my head. Eight you know? bridesmaids. I think, I don't know, I don't know. It's going to be a fucking shambles. I can't wait. I, I've got no idea. We've got a wedding planner who's got most of it. Oh, is he gay? Please let him be gay. Oh, no, it's a woman called Michelle. Oh, is right. she gay? Very organised. She's like Monica, our friends. Nice. Yeah. That's what you want, isn't it? Um, what time do we finish? Is it early? <laughs> You're in such an evil mood. He, he, in the first section of today's episode, had to self-edit so beautifully. We had no idea what he was doing. He sat here going, <laughs> so the just bride moved. Yeah. Let's hope this one lasts longer than the last one, eh? And uh, give it three hours, and we'll know for sure. <laughs> you say that, so. <laughs> Mate, I love that. Uh, <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> At the end of the first dance. <laughs> <laughs> if you're there for the first dance, it'll be a fucking better, t- a better turnout than the last time. <laughs> First dance last time was your fucking ex trying to make keep you stood up. Oh, me, so no. <laughs> You're gonna see me on the day like sipping water on the sly. Trying to stay oh. sober. <laughs> what time? What time's this? Uh, f- um, the ceremony over. Two That's o'clock. The- oh, you fucking legend! So much day boozing. I know. Oh, sorry, the ceremony started too, but it's only like short. It's like yeah, half an yeah, hour. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a and shit we're not going to do m- much of the like standing around picture shit. We've got the photographers just doing candid shit. Yeah, it's well better. Just meal, just yeah, meal, meal. Don't beach, want man. it all, thank Yeah, yeah. Right. And I she's got to do a fucking co- Oscars costume change. Are you writing your own vows? Yeah. Are you? Mm, done it. Have you? Mm. Are you happy with it? Mm. Do you want me to punch it up for you? No, but <laughs> that's do you know how annoying was, that is. A comedian tell that it. to another comedian. <laughs> <laughs> punch it up. I know you've done the arenas, but uh, let me punch that up for you. I just end up with Tom State. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming on next week. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I was flapping about doing that, but then when I looked into it in my head, the, your vows were like a speech, and they're not. They're just promises, aren't they? So it's dead easy. It took me like fucking ten minutes. All right, is that or is it not? You're not doing a speech. Yeah, well, I've got. I'm. I'm still working on my speech. Right. Oh, you got to do a speech as well. Yeah, you got to do a speech. Right. Well. So, what what sort of promise is it? Like a promise I'll do the dishes when you need me to. Yeah, a promise so I'll put a wash like on. I'll clean the windows. <laughs> what the fuck? He owns a Lamborghini. <laughs> promise I'll do the dishes. I'll always put it in Strada <laughs> when I'm coming home at night. <laughs> I do do that though. I'm very cons- like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Considerate. Put it in the fucking. <laughs> What's the what's the like most innocuous promise you've made in the vows? I don't want to say. Why? Because she'll fucking she'll see. I don't want because she. Oh, we get a world exclusive because, there. Only because no. she's flapping about it because she hasn't done it yet because she's fucking last minute and I keep winding up about it. Tell us, get in touch with me. I'll write it for her. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, promise nice. to always suck it off. I, I promise to be better, better than your ex wife. That's all you'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. That should be a given. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Helen. How are you doing well? Uh, I feel bad. She loves this podcast. Yeah. She does. Hi, how are Hi you? Helen. Hi, Rob Thomas. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should cut that last minute up. <laughs> <laughs> I was obviously joking. I'm a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in such a... Do you know what? I've had two hours kiff. 
Last night, I was in London last night. I've had two hours care because I had to get a fucking six a.m. train to get here, and I've had six coffees, <laughs> and it's I've got this caffeine infused <laughs> divilment in me, and I just want to ruin everything. Divilment. Just burn it all. You know the Joker set fire to all the money in uh, the dark night. And he's just like, let everything burn. That's where I, where I feel like I'm at today. Good. Are you working tonight? No. That was how you were working. Are you working tonight? Hot water. I might come down if I'm not exhausted. Yeah. Hang. Got Jared it. Christmas is on, and I really like watching Jared. Jared's on. Deliso's on. Ugh. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Being such a good. <laughs> Jared well, Deliso's in the World Museum. What? Like he's got a he's got an exhibition in the World Museum. Where is the World Museum? In the film. Right. Either by St George's Hall. Okay. Because he took the piss out of the Slave Museum. Okay. He said, "Do it better then." So he's got like a fucking. He's recorded like a special show which they've cut up and put next to like exhibitions of like African monuments or like African artifacts, sorry. <laughs> what? You right, Ral? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you have a bit about the slave museum? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're just wrapping up this section, but I think we've got time for one last thought. Adam on the slave museum. Athletic greens have really improved my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got health. You've got health. <laughs> Take them every morning, just before you go to the slavery museum. Yeah. You need, that nu- you need nutrition. <laughs> uh-huh. Help you con- concentrate. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Supplement your white guilt. Um, I'm going to play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's do that in the break. Let's have a sing song, privately. That was the nowadays. What's happening, guys? How are we? We're here to tell you about our sponsor, our partner in crime, Athletic Greens. Dan, what is Athletic Greens? It's a comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition. This is AG1. I've been taking that every single morning. It Look, I've been struggling with like me nutrition and stuff on the road when you're touring, you're eating shite late at night, and it's very, very hard to get all the stuff you're meant to be having. So I've started taking it every morning when I get up. I mix it in with a load of water. Got a little one of these at home. Sent me a little scoop. It's dead, dead easy. And we've got a little offer for you that they have very conveniently sent for us and our listeners. Yeah, Adam's right. It's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free, it's cheaper than getting all your different supplements yourself. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five star reviews. And it's recommended by professional Can't athletes. Can't be shy if that many people are saying five stars, can it? Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune support in vitamin D and five free, Adam, five free travel packs. <laughs> with your first purchase all you have to do is vi- visit athleticgreens.com slash have a word where do they have to visit Adam? athleticgreens.com slash have a word you can't get that wrong athleticgreens.com slash have a word it's the name of the fucking podcast can't fuck that up can you? go ahead welcome back to the final section let's have a picture of, uh, let's have it let's, let's see Paul hey. Hey. he looks good doesn't he? camera doesn't go off when Carl's here you'll never be Carl um, sorry about that. If you were listening, Christ. if you were listening, you don't care. <laughs> but we just lost ten minutes of visual of the beautiful Paul Smith. Yeah, yeah. But now he's back. It's all right. We can guess who's we can, back. We can fix it. Back again. I just Paul think CGI. C- CGI. Yeah. You've got, yeah. you got the budget for that now. Yeah. You're smashing it. When you've got cameras Fucking that switch Paul. off randomly, you definitely don't have CGI money. <laughs> yeah, you've yeah, you got that Patreon money. You can just pay some Hollywood. Oh, yeah. 450 yeah. grand a Get month me now. CGI Thank you all. BMW Z4. If they can put two pack into the fucking hologram or something, they can put me in. <laughs> That's it. I want two pack for the rest of the episode. Paul I Smith. want two packs <laughs> sat next to Paul. <laughs> Could you just and re- Biggie there. <laughs> you are not leaving this building tonight, are you? A lot of editing, Steve. <laughs> a lot of editing. I Some two pack there for the ho- just spitting bars, freestyling the whole time. Write the freestyle as well. Go on. No, just a hologram because it'd be off putting. <laughs> Got some questions. <laughs> Got some questions for you, Paul. Lovely. Love We've got 20 minutes before he just falls asleep where he sits. <laughs> he's done phenomenal, but he's lacking yeah. in sleep. No, no, I'm good. We can do a good... I'm having I reckon we can break our last section record, yeah? Just try a bit of that. It's honestly... It's not fizzy. Up that. You'll end up in the fucking royal. No, it's not fizzy. Oh, my That's God. It's not, it's not fizzy. You'll end up in the royal and having a fucking panic attack. Oh, it's liquid cocaine. 
It's nice, isn't it? I think we just got ourselves a new sponsor. Brett Phillips says, as you get to travel as comedians, have you ever suffered with a case of Paris syndrome? I used to travel a lot for my work and never have I felt so disappointed that when I went to LA, rampant homelessness, barren landscapes, and overall just bad vibes, despite all of its hypes. Is there a city where you were excited for it until you got there? Cheers from Brett. Yeah, I was really excited for Lincoln. Oh, Lincoln, the city yeah. of love. So, yeah. yeah. Lincoln's not, I mean, I've only been to be honest with you, Paul, I tried to fish out a shit town and Lincoln's just fine. Lincoln, and it didn't Lincoln work. actually said no. <laughs> like, you know what I had to do been, there? I had to avoid one. saying Coventry because I say Coventry all the time. <laughs> Coventry's not, the, well. Coventry is a is, big cinder block of shite. Yeah. <laughs> Aberdeen <laughs> is the maddest thing I've ever seen. It's, it's like it's in Bars, black and white. Two packs here. Yeah. Aberdeen was <laughs> one of the, is the total opposite. I, I got there, didn't just accepted that gig and got there and fucking loved it. I oh, loved it Aberdeen. A, I, I had a good time when I was there, but I, you, know, you get there and you go, is, I've never seen a greyer place in my life. Oh, and I was yeah. like, is my head Coventry? falling off here? And it's, no, it's that's literally what it's, it's known for. It's just their stone. Yeah, that's what it's known for, to be like, it's all grey. Plymouth's the same. Plymouth's like yeah. local stone is yeah. really grey. And on a nice day, you're like, you don't notice it. On a rainy day, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> you made your town the same as the sad clouds. Yeah. It's fucking grim. Yeah. Um, and then there's beautiful places like York that are filled with miserable cunts who don't deserve comedy. Yeah. Mm. 2023, I'll be at Pocklington Art Centre. Looking forward to seeing you there. I'll be in the Barbican. Nice. I'll be in Leeds. <laughs> I'll be in Lincoln <laughs> taking his date <laughs> where have I been that's been a bit meh I don't know Barrow's depressing <laughs> but it's not like you in like, fairness yeah it's not like you were like oh, I can't wait to be in oh, Barrow wait, this guy wait what I was just I, I should have dinged the bell for that one that was good though um, <laughs> see Birmingham you get gets, it because it's called Barrow in fairness <laughs> And it, that, in fairness, is like also the start of the sentence where you're going to sort of counteract something someone's just said. So I, I played on that because he said Barrow. So I said, in fairness. Do you get it? And I didn't say anything else. But like the the way I said it would imply that I was using in fairness as like I was about to counteract. But I, what I meant was like, that's the rest of the name of the town. It's really clever, actually. Yeah. Always, good, always good when you have to explain your jokes like that to well, make you know, sure. Look what I'm working you... with. It's not my fault. That... Oh, oh, hey. <laughs> Because, you know, I wasn't very fair. Some things go, in this. fairness. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hmm. <laughs> it's very annoyed if you don't hear thought... and love his joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, does, it's yeah. a pretty intense sort of thing. Like, right, that deserved a lot more. And we're stopping everything <laughs> until he gets something. Yeah. You cunt. It's always the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Brighton was, I found, the last time I did Brighton, I found it quite depressing. Why? Because. Brighton's wonderful. Well, the last time I went there, I was there for like four days, and the Wednesday and Thursday, I'd go down the lanes, it's beautiful and stuff, it's a nice place in the day. But and when I did the show, there was a part of my show this year about getting pegged by my missus, wasn't it? Right. And I thought you were being homophobic. Well, mate, I swear, it's the only place. Some, some guy stood up, went fucking berserk at that bit and, and stormed out another guy in the front row I could hear him but no one else could hear him so and he was just sat in the front row going you fucking faggot you're a dirty bitch you're a bit and he was fuming so I said um, there's a guy in the front row in fuming Brighton here. in Brighton right so I was like I said there's a guy in the front row fuming here so I'm gonna go as far as I can go with it because most of the audience was still with it and so we just took it further and further and further and then he went mad and like, so he was so he's then, a, he's so in I the gay a, capital of mate, the UK, and he's a yeah, massive homophobe. The, I mean, I've done it. I've done it like all over the country in like working class towns, and people love it. They love a pegging in Warrington. Yeah, yeah. They oh, look, yeah. mate. They look. It was the best bit of the show, and yeah, in bright. I, I I couldn't get my head around what was going on, but it was like you know when you can feel a bit going a bit weird. It was the worst place I've done it, and I was like. What's going on here? And then it came off. And you no, know, Laurie's best mate, Katie, yeah. lives in Brighton now. She's a lesbian. And I said, That was fucking mad that I did not expect that. And she went, Oh, yeah, it's getting bad here now. And then I went out. Like, we were. Go it's getting homophobic yeah. in the gay capital Apparently of the UK. It's like, it's getting bad. Like, like there's the a lot of like, hate crime and stuff like that. 
Mad. Oh, so after so after years of it being like, oh, it's the gay yeah, capital, like, like the non. Well, what it is, what? like the people who live in Brighton, it's obviously the people who live in Brighton now. The people from the out, like the the, the immediate outskirts who come in and watch shows, they have All right, a yeah, problem yeah. with it. Do you know what I mean? And there's right, a lot yeah, of, I know. Because every passion. time, every time I've had a bad gig in Brighton. They've been like, yeah, there's a massive stag doing from Croydon yeah, or yeah. something. But it was aggy as fuck. When, even just in the town, I saw about four or five fights, people fucking on the floor, like passed out and stuff. And I was like, and loads of homeless people. And I was like, this is weird. So weird. That is not what I've experienced. Oh, from Brighton. no, don't. I fucking love going to Brighton. I loved it as well. Don't tell me it's gone all hate <laughs> crimey. I was, I was good because I've like, been going on about it. Like, all, like to Loz going, oh, it's amazing. We'll, we'll go for a few days. And uh, as I said, we because we went to get our wedding rings there as well, and it, like uh, uh, the first couple of days were lovely, and then that night I was like, "Fuck me!" I'm uh, like all the bars had metal detectors on and stuff. It's crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Heavy, mm -hmm. heavy. Um, talking about heavy, Jake Van San says, "What's the heaviest item you can lift with your bell end?" <laughs> Great question, Jake. Thank you for asking it. <laughs> Ford Focus. Just with your bell end. I mean, I would it? love to see you try. I'd love to <laughs> see you, you try. Use the rest of your dick, though. You just have to use your belly. I, I, I think I think we'd give you full dick here. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, easy sound. then, isn't it? <laughs> just to see him try and straddle. <laughs> you <laughs> you can't get you? leverage just with your belly, but yeah. when, when you got the fucking big fella, yeah, you could it. lift that guitar with me dick. Yeah, what like just off the floor? If you had an erect dick, if if could I had you an hold, erect dick, could you balance that guitar underneath that? Not the whole guitar, but I could. I reckon I could get it off the floor. Yeah. St one foot on the desk, one foot on the couch. If I just, like, did a little kegel, hmm. I reckon I could get it Cool. Up. But not in Brighton. Not weird. in Brighton, no, they'd fucking kick off. <laughs> get your dick away from my guitar, you fucking guitar homo. <laughs> uh, should we do some <laughs> advice? That's such a weird question. Sometimes they fly. And they just disappear into you. Other times you're like, yeah, it was a weird one about you, dick. <laughs> um, Adam's getting very good at giving advice, Paul. Don't know if you... Because he's just... I, honestly, Because he I, loves I always, people. I, I've known this for years. I always go to Adam for advice. He does, actually. And actually does. And I go to him. That's a good, big part of our relationship is if I'm in pedal, I call Paul. If he's in pedal, he calls Paul Blair and then he calls me. <laughs> he knows where, his, <laughs> knows where his bread's buttered. <laughs> <laughs> is that... Uh, Honestly, are you like a little no. fucking... Like, we well, can take the piss all, all you like. But I actually am quite good. I'm not very good at taking my own advice. But I'm quite good at looking at a situation objectively, taking emotion out of it for someone else and going, here's what you should do. I am actually quite good at that. I can't, cannot wait for you to be a marriage guidance counsellor. It's, it's, I mean, I'm never going to do that. Oh, you should have to wait think an about awful it. long but time. He did, think about it. He, he was the first person that I spoke to when I, got, when I was getting divorced. Yeah. And he took me out for dinner. Where did he go? To a pub Is on it? the links. <laughs> we were hungover as fuck. Because yeah. the night before, he'd rang me. It was the night Sean Collins offered me a fight. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? <laughs> he'd text me and gone, what, what are you doing tonight? And I was like, nothing. I was like, uh, he's like, should we go for a pint? And I was like, yeah. And I didn't know at the time. He wanted a chat, but I brought Carl. And it's not that he wouldn't chat in front of Carl. It's just that that was not the situation that was then there. No. So we just got twatted. And then the next day he rang me and he was like, this is actually what I wanted yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Yeah. I was like, right, let's go to the pub. And we went to the pub and then he come to mine and then, yeah. Oh. It always ends up me, you and Carlo. Like yeah. when you split up with your ex, we, we, me, you yeah, and Carlo yeah. in the post. That video of me, um, me and you singing, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> in a takeaway. In, in the boat, on yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that video. And you were so, rap battling that kid. Yeah, I won. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> some students, yeah. and he just wouldn't let it go. No, because he, he's just a cunt for no reason. He was acting like he was on Twitter, and he was like, "He's well funnier than you." And I was like, "Right, bars." <laughs> bars. <laughs> he did. He went straight to bars, though. Not a fight. Smith, give me a beat. <laughs> Didn't need a beat. A cappella. Betty the fella. That's it. <laughs> oh, oh, I hope the camera's picked it up. I hope the camera's picked it up. Just that Say it again. again. His lip Say quivered. Say it again. His lip quivered because he went, I want to think of something else. And then he went, nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me. Uh, imagine trying to rap battle if Binti Blair was there. Because he'd be like, all right. <laughs> that's actually happened. 
No. Because Paul Blair, when Paul Blair, 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 had, that, Paul Blair when has drunk. five pints and just immediately starts rapping. Have we never told you this? Yeah, but doesn't he go super aggressive with it? Oh, Paul Blair, yeah. if, if a doorman's, and, and like, if a doorman's well. like, you can't come in, you should be drunk, he'd be like, right, <laughs> okay, not going to let me in. I'll knock you out, put you in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> but he turns around and he goes, ah, ah, like, like we're all going to be in the back now, like hyper, hyper. <laughs> we're all just there, like, I'd, I'd stop if, it. If you go and put an hat on or something, you might. <laughs> might you might just That doesn't even rhyme. And it's literally a point where we got, he, he always hits this point and you go, ah, oh, Blazer, rap battling now. We call it Paul Bled. He's Paul Bled. And even like, if, if you get too drunk too quick, you're Paul Bled. Like, when we went out with Molly McCann, you were Paul Bled. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. I wasn't rap battling. I was over tipping Uber drivers. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, you have children. Uh, children are a beautiful gift. I was like, it was a 30 quid tip. I tried to give a taxi driver me telly once. <laughs> and then I give him a Nintendo Switch. What? Why? Because you felt bad? No, because I'd been, <laughs> I think I got mugged. But I can't remember what happened. I just didn't have any of my stuff. Oh yeah, you went through a phase of this, didn't you? Because I black out when I'm pissed. This is why I've stopped going out in town and getting absolutely fucking ba like smashed because yeah, you keep I've giving away Nintendo. People recognise me, and we went into Berry and Rye, and we started drinking Sazeracs. I was there. You were there, yeah. And then we I'm went to fucking Po. <laughs> when we, and we went to the was it? Yeah, we went Pogues, Pogues. Then we all like down Guinness. And I Pogues is my and then we went to town, what's the an, another place? So after Pogues, I've blacked out. I woke up, my phone was smashed a bit. Yeah. All I was a girl that worked at is she lost her phone, all the money. No one knows what happened. So you all got quietly mugged because you were so hammered. But ours was separate. But all yeah. I remember is these lads had gone past in like a beamer and he'd, I got, and then he jumped out and got some pictures and I was a bit smashed. And then we went in that other gaff, had some whiskeys, and I think I got off. But somehow they got, someone had took 200 quid out of a cash machine at the, by Toki, which I don't know how I've ended up there. And this taxi driver found me walking in the middle of the road saying I'd been mugged by the women's hospital. Brought me home because he recognised me. I didn't have any money. I can't remember none of this. And I've got, I've gone. I've got no money. And he's got. He told because he come back the next day because he posted a letter through going. I've got your Nintendo Switch. You wouldn't let me leave without it because you either had no money to pay me. <laughs> You're trying to get me to unscrew your fucking seventy five inch Samsung telly off the wall to take it with you because you felt bad because you didn't have no money to pay it. And he no, you didn't me tell me. Yeah. So, no. Look, I mean, he could have took a good job. He was a good guy. Like, cause he could have just took me telly and I'd have woke up going, where the fuck's me telly? As I woke up going, didn't have my phone or nothing. And I was like, where the fuck's where's me Where's my fucking kazoo? Yeah, where's me Nintendo <laughs> Switch? <laughs> you, that's when you got to stop the blackout drinking, eh? When, yeah. you, when you're trying to unscrew tellies. Yeah, that's, when, tell, I, yeah. that's when I had a word with myself and was like, because there's been there's, there's a few times before that. I, I should have that's got a title of the podcast, by the way. Because I get fucking, I get... Fucking silly pissed. Like I, I just hit a wall, me and go, and I'm an absolute mess, and I end up in fucking pizza. But the time before that, I tried to fight with Callum Oakley because I was because I get pissed on one food, and I was trying to order food. So in this tunnel vision when he's drunk, it's it's really, really, really funny. Like when I'm drunk, I'm sort of anyone's friend. Like I'm just I'm there. I'll as long as you want to carry on drinking, we're, we're friends. I just I, I've got no like time to go home. Button, I'm just like, well, we're here until they won't give us any more, aren't we? That's the plan. Whereas he's like, he just hits a moment and it will happen mid conversation sometimes. He'll be like, he'll be like, right, so no, the point is just trying to make you don't even, and he's got, and it's just, <laughs> just fucking you know, Peter, Paul, Peter and two chips. He's it. walked off before, and Paul, Carl's come over and gone, Where, where's he going? Is he, he seems a bit pissed off. And I was like, no, 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 no. We're in the middle of a conversation about Formula One, which neither <laughs> of us watch. Uh, <laughs> but he hasn't even told me, but I guarantee he's gone for food. <laughs> I do. But then I got in this kebab house and I'm fucking trying to order food. And Callum kept going, he wants a fish kebab. And I'm trying to go, I don't want a fucking fish kebab. So I've gone fucking, it's in the pizza place next door to hot water. So I've gone fucking mad. Some fellas start to go, lad, calm down. So I've, there's been three coppers behind me waiting for food and I've gone fuck off started trying to fucking fight with people the doorman the old doorman from Hot Water is coming to help me and I've gone where the fuck are you why aren't you backing me up you fucking shit house right <laughs> I've gone out finally got me food went out and just threw it at the doorman but people were all filming me 
And I was like, Good. Fuck. I know. I deserve it. Absolutely. You deserve it. I'm not saying, but then I was like, you know, when you see yourself and you go, ah, I haven't said that. If anyone's got any footage of me from down the years, just don't eat that. <laughs> we don't need that. We are, we're, Good. Oh, we've all made mistakes. <laughs> Good. We're all human. We've all been there. Do you know what I mean? That dance floor didn't look wet enough, and that's why I pissed on it. <laughs> <laughs> that pitch is going to do the rounds for a while. If, right. I could, if I could go back in time and film one moment for my life that I didn't get recorded, that would be you projectile vomiting. Onto Michelle McClellan's face. Yeah. yeah. It was Michelle. the most beautiful <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. Michelle? It's a girl who worked in Envy. We've definitely told this story on here before. Yeah, okay. have, yeah. I got oh, hammered, did, yeah. walked over to ask her out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And just vomited in her face. Just for a th second, I thought you said Michelle McManus. And I. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a different it was the story. The Pop Idol after party. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was working the Pop Idol after party. Not even that big. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. Well, because of all of those stories, you're great at giving advice, aren't you? That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have one from Anonymous. He says, "Hey, I have a proper dilemma. I've just bagged a Tinder date with an 11 out of 10 who is 41. I'm glad that ended out of 10. And I'm." <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> play, I didn't even see it. Uh, with an 11 out of 10, who is nine. Um, an 11 out of 10, who is 41, and I'm 18. MILF vibes. Well, sort of, yeah. Pedophile vibes as well. And wow. don't know how to play it. We did a video call on WhatsApp to make sure each other was legit and it was the most awkward thing ever. I've never been with another woman before and don't want it to be too awkward. Would appreciate the, any advice. Thanks, Never been with another woman? Yeah. Is, she, is that a woman? Yeah. So it's a girl. So it must be a girl who's 18. She's on uh, a Tinder date. Go and get your minge absolutely yeah. polished. Vibe. This woman is going yeah, to give you the world. experience of your life. If... If, if you were straight and this was a man, I'd be like, absolutely don't go near this guy. There's something wrong. But if you just go and get absolutely valid to fuck. Valid. Yeah. Valid. Full valley. Full valley. Do you mean valid? What? We had this last time you were on. I know. Yeah. You're still not fucking getting it right. I don't care. <laughs> if you can't now apply it to something else incorrectly. I can. And I will. I will. Can't. I can. Sorry. Go and thing. get your pussy valid, yeah. valeted, whatever Paul valeted. wants us to say. Full valid. Get an air freshener as you finish. Yeah. Okay, seven pump, please. <laughs> Do a great job. <laughs> Fucking auto glimpse. Th this will be the best experience. You'll learn stuff off this woman that you can then take to other 18 year olds. You're going to be the fucking queen of pussy town soon, you. That's what lesbians like to be as well, isn't it? That's a good thing to lesbians. It they is. love to be the queen of pussy town. <laughs> it's actually an award ceremony given to every pride. There's a queen of pussy town award. And obviously we don't know about it because we're not gay women. You're going to be muffed diver of the year at the Nickelodeon Awards. <laughs> well, now that's a rival. That's like... That's like... Dub <laughs> that's like a different award. Yeah. But if you get both of those belts at the same yeah. time, you've unified the division. <laughs> undisputed. She's the undisputed lesbian. <laughs> undisputed. Of Nickelodeon. <laughs> Did I tell you about me and lesbian best mate now? Who I met? No. Ah, oh, mate, I had the belt. I didn't know the man. Right. Oh, I, I, I did my Iron Man show. Uh -huh. and went out after it. Tickets still on sale. Very much on sale for my Iron Man show, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, mate, I'll, I'll, what day is your Iron Man show? 26th of April. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, what day is that on? A Tuesday. Oh, man. I wish I could come over. We'd have the best time. Um, this So this girl, right? Her Can you just go and headline my show so that it's not full? <laughs> <laughs> Don't usually do this at the end of the show. But <laughs> I've only done ten minutes. Can we yeah. just do a double header? You can have all the money. I just want. <laughs> I just don't want to be performing to two hundred people in a thousand seater. It's a nice theatre, though. It is a nice theatre. Yeah. It's nicer when there's people in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we did the show, uh, and then the guys who organise it, there's only a couple of bars in the other man. So we went. Do you want to come to like? We've got a booth in this. I know the guy who owns it. I'll get you a booth in that. But. The people who, the guy who'd organised it had been to a week in the day. Mm. So I got there and half this booth was just full of people from the week. And this one woman was absolutely, you know when someone gets like weird, like she obviously was in mourning, but she got to the point of piss now where she just wanted to have sex with someone. Yeah. 
So she was all over Rudy, the cameraman. Then she was all over, so Rudy left. And then she was all over Phil Chapman. And so he left and then Binti left, right? So, and but this guy was just chatting me off and I was quite interested because he was telling me about how it's a tax haven and that. So I was sat, like, listening to him and that. And, uh, <laughs> and then this woman comes to me. So that, And then this, g- this girl called Jasmine comes over, right? Just sits down, just barges her out the way. And just goes, listen, don't worry. I'm not after your cock. I'm a lesbian. But I think you sound. And just shook me on like this, but one of them cool handshakes. And put like half a gram of cocaine in the right? And I went, your sound, you. Right? <laughs> and then she was like, but she just knew everyone in this bar, right? So everyone's just letting on to her. And she went, while I'm here, no one above you. So I was like, who the fuck is this girl, right? So I started chatting to her and she was dead funny. So it's just, so I went and had some and then come back. And it was just. She, it was just weird in there. It was a weird vibe, and this girl was. And she went, "I'm going to knock this girl out in a minute." She, so she went, she went, "It's shit in here." She went, "I know it's a bit weird, but I've got like, I've got, a, I've got, a, I'm going back to my mate's house. Do you want to come?" Like, and I was like, "Yeah, fuck it." <laughs> so I ended up in a house with five lesbians, right, <laughs> in, in the middle of nowhere in the Isle of Man, and I thought, "Turns out Paul's the queen of pussies." I'm going to after, <laughs> but Loz was on her hen do that night, so I thought I'm going to have to phone her. Because I can't go back and go, I ended up in a fucking house with five lesbians. I'm going to have to phone her and go, like, listen, this has happened, but, like, don't worry about it. So I FaceTimed Loz, and she was in bed going, ah, it wasn't that, like, and I went, how the fuck am I on a better hen, dude? Than you? <laughs> 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 There's fucking cocaine everywhere. There's fucking lesbians dancing around. I had the fucking, I, I had the bell tonight, but then I didn't get back until, I, my flight was, like, eight o'clock in the morning. Mate, lesbians are a great hang. Mate, it it's so fun. fun. It, she was fucking hilarious. Because you know, you can't. It's it take. It's like yeah. like mates yeah, because yeah. You, it takes away a thing of like. Well, maybe we could. They're like no, and you're like, oh, it's great. Honestly, she's one of the soundest people. I talk to her all the time now. She's fucking sound. She's fucking What's she called? Jasmine. La- yeah, she's in my phone as lesbian Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> she put herself in there as that by the way. Right. Cool. <laughs> well, yeah, just go for it. You're 18. Fucking do it. Yeah. But if you're a 41 year old who likes fucking 18 year old girls, ugh, is that not a bit like creepy? No? Did yeah. you write this in to see what we think about you fucking 18 year old girls? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Did I write a thing Hot about. Twist. I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize until you said another woman. Mm. I completely thought this was just an 18 year old lad who's about to. But it might be a lad, but he's just like only had one girlfriend. Never been with another woman. No, no I think this girl. is. I think this yeah, is a girl. Yeah, I, so. I completely misread it. Mm. Go and get absolutely sorted out and and make notes. Yeah, and they can't do no harm, can they? No. Um, the, the worst thing that can happen is that you come too much. That's not the, the worst thing. thing. <laughs> not the worst thing. How many times is too much, Adam, for a lesbian? It depends on your individual preference. That's, that's true, isn't it? How much you've hydrated that day. Yeah. When you get a stitch. Have you had your athletic green? <laughs> <laughs> Take a big strap on if you need a stitch. I've had too much sneak. <laughs> sounds like a fucking shit party drunk. <laughs> fucking sneaked yeah. off me head, lad. It sounds, <laughs> Steve, it sounds like a drug out of Robocop. Steve, <laughs> <laughs> Steve looks like a lesbian, and he basically went, here, I have that for oh. me too. Um, lady called out. You would make a good lesbian. Cheers, mate. Nice yeah. one. You're a really handsome woman. <laughs> what makes you say that? Your face. Yeah. You look like you'd be good at snooker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's oh, you can hustle pool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lottie, I'm at back of the party. Four lesbians and Stee. <laughs> <laughs> Another man one. Another man one. Stee's got them on strings. He's lost two <laughs> games in a row, but there's no money involved yet. <laughs> <laughs> they won't bite. <laughs> um, should we do another sex one? Yeah, yeah. Lady called L. This is from a lady. All right, lids, I need some advice. So a bit of backstory. My fiance is 35 and I'm almost 23. We've been together two years now and I've very much left the shag in every chance we get stage behind. So back in my single days, I was a bit of a filthy slag, very into bondage, slapping during sex, spitting. In, mm, Mama like that. Mama. Uh, cheeky bit of DP, all the good stuff. And obviously with the 12 year age gap, I'm always looking for new and exciting things to do. My fella, on the other hand, is relatively vanilla. And the most exciting thing we've done is anal. 
For a few months now, I've been asking him if I can finger his arsehole or lick his bum hole just to spice things up a bit. He keeps being a little bitch and saying he doesn't want to do it. Do I respect his boundaries and accept that now I'm engaged to him, the wild sexual side of me has to die down, or do I tell him to grow up and let me rim him? Absolutely love the podcast and so proud of how well you're all doing. Keep it up, lids. That's from Do not Leah. respect his boundaries. No, call him a little Paul, bitch. Oh, what would you do? I'd love if she called me a little bitch. I'd, I'd respond to that. I, I mean, how you don't want someone to rim yet is... He does, he just doesn't know. I know. So Here's what you need to do, love. Lick his arsehole as a surprise. Yeah, Wake him up with it. Like, just, go, just go to the balls and then just go to the gooch and then just be like... Uh. Yeah, and he... Honestly, like he's going to have the time of his life and he just doesn't realise so it. Hang on. You, when you're doing the surprise rimming, yeah. you're doing it in and around a blowjob, not like when he's washing the pots. No. Well, you don't pants him and they're like... Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd no, enjoy no, that. No, that's silly. No. <laughs> uh, that's been silly. No, also, I, that it's a make, very difficult make angle to get. Nicer. Oh, it's if the he's angle. doing the dishes, it's hard to get where you need to be as a surprise. Still you'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> Enough the pocket. <laughs> no, you just, you can either do it mid blowjob or wake him up with it. What about if, if he, he sleeps on his back? What about if he's changing the oil in his car? <laughs> hey, chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Sure, take your opportunities. Use a dipstick. But do not respect <laughs> his boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> Penetration is different. Don't finger him against his will. Oh, we've said that before. Yeah. We stand for that on this podcast. That's okay. one of our mantras. We do. Uh, I reckon we are... you can, not against his will, but once you've rimmed him a little bit, just, and then, boop. just, you, you, but if he says no. it's weird to ask, isn't it? Yeah. It's weird to ask. Yeah, you don't it's weird that if you ask, it's weird if you go, can I finger you? Depends where you are. If you're in Tesco. I fingered faux pas. a few people in my life, and I don't think once have I ever gone, can I finger you? Now, I don't think that... Paul uh, Smith never asks for consent. There's a world exclusive, ladies but, and gentlemen. Things implied, have changed. Things have changed now. by the noises. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. If she's barking, <laughs> come by. Come by. <laughs> I mean, the main thing is, Leah... I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the main thing. I, th that's what I want to take away from this. My advice is, I love you. And I think you're wonderful. <laughs> that's it. He, he that's just doesn't know. He, he doesn't know how how much good this is going to bring his life. He doesn't. Every know man, how great especially. You are. I imagine he's from a working class background because I just imagine all of our listeners are working class men are fearful of ass play because they've got. Internalized homophobia, right? And I'm still there with a lot of it. You know what I mean? I don't want any more than a digit up there. No one's fucking me in the ass, okay? Fact. But a little tongue on my bum hole oh, is yeah. a welcome addition to a Tuesday. Hey, Tuesday, <laughs> not a Tuesday rim. Oh, not a midweek rim. Come Tom on, Tuesdays. Champions League night. Two for Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Champions League night. Whenever the footy's <laughs> on, you can get rimmed. Cool. Yeah. Just you don't want to be. The, you don't want to get rimmed on a Thursday because that's Europa League. What if it? there's no Champions League and it's a league fixture night championship? It's not as good, is it? No, but there could feasibly be a Champions League game. Preston Millwall's not getting you the mood for a rimming, is it? No, no absolutely no. not. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. You're right. It needs to be. A What's big the Barnsley, Barnsley score? <laughs> <laughs> he will like it though. I, I I defy any man to get his arsehole licked and tell me it was a problem. <laughs> Just look after yourself, Leah. You're essentially a national treasure. That's what I think. And that's what Paul thinks. Have you been Rimsty? <laughs> Once. <laughs> of course he has. He's a lesbian. I Once. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The yeah, I live man. I miss getting rimmed. I haven't been rimmed for a while. How long? Been a while now. She been this year. She, oh, I tell you what, get married then. That'll really no, up the rimmin. She, she, she thinks she got E. coli from rimmin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she stands by that as well. And at the time, I was correct, but I don't think it was that. And she used to be, she used to be quite like into that, but now since then, she doesn't do it that much anymore. Has she rimmed you this year? Yeah. yeah that's all right then. It's only yeah. fucking the first week of April, lad. Calm down. Cool. Cool. Good fun. Good fun. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so you've been Rimsday? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, can, we end, can we end on this? I feel God. like I've laughed. Was it a one-night stand or was it like a, a relationship? One-night stand, yeah. Hmm. That's a that's a, 
an adventurous lady. Yeah. <laughs> she was, it was uh, quite the night. <laughs> 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 Turns out, if you sat there, you, just, you just don't want to share. <laughs> I'm a producer. And Have you ever uh, been fingered? No. No? What'd you be fingered? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. I don't know. Next time you're in the bath, just see how you feel. Bath. Yeah. Bubble bath. Bubble bath, Defo. Oh, yeah. So can't not salt, Defo. Hey, and salt. even if you don't like it, can't judge you'll, myself, you'll definitely be clean. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> you never fingered yourself in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even cleaned yourself. How'd you clean your asshole? With like, you don't have douche. to put me finger in. Yeah, you do. How'd you get it? <gasps> oh, yeah. In uh, Japan, they've had the douches. Yeah, I just put a bit of dove on my finger and just. Yeah. That finger. I, get the, I, I use finger. the full bar of soap now. Dirty get. <laughs> I just put the bottle up there sometimes and squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> to give it a good clean. Hey, why don't we have right? I was thinking about this last week because I was in Turkey, right? Why don't we have them little bum washes on our toilets? B days. No, on the toilets there now. This has got a little nozzle, and there's a there's like a tap next to it, and you press it, and it goes. Shh. So it is a B day essentially, but it's actually just in the toilet. I think the same theory as Adam. I think natural homophobia of like get that fucking stream out of my bum hole. Fucking great, though. It's incredible. They have them as standard in Japan as well. Carl's told me about yeah. it. Game Ca- do you know Carl won't have a shit anywhere other than his own house because he has to get a shower as soon as he's shit? Why? Because that's just how he, how he lives his life. Why is he bad at wiping his bum or something? He, he just doesn't think wiping does enough. I saw Chris Ramsey talk about this a few years ago on a couples program where they bitched about each other. as like It was quite, quite good. Laura enjoyed it. Yeah. And he was like, when you have poo on your skin, you need to wash it off with water. It is like if you got poo on your arm, you wouldn't be like, a oh, a bit of tissue. Yeah, but you oh, can use. Gone. I I like them washlets, mate. I like the wet wipes that you can flush. Right. They're good. Right, that's what you use to wipe shit off your arm. Off my arm and bum. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I wish that was a lie, but I mean, I get shit on my arm quite often. I have. I use Dettol wipes on my ass. Kids and dogs kills ninety nine point nine percent of bacteria, including COVID. Steve, have you ever got shit on your arm? Never mind. First date. <laughs> Um, can we wrap it up? It's been an absolute pleasure. You had some stuff to plug. You got some stuff happening. Look to yes, Cameron and tell I have. Um, I have a new tour going on sale in about three weeks, so about two and a half weeks when this, when this goes out, mid-May. So keep your eye on hotwatercomedy.co.uk for that. New big tour. Going to be the biggest one, yeah. There's 100 dates in so far. I'm going for 150. Jesus. Um, so that's going to be big. Um, my and Laurie's podcast is back at the start of June. What's the story, Paul and Laurie? And we're going to launch a Patreon. And my my special from the Change Tour is going to be launched with that Patreon. So keep your eyes out for that as well. Uh, get on our YouTube. Um, I don't know if you put links and stuff in. but Yeah. Do. yeah, yeah. They'll put links in bios and stuff for me. Yeah, and that's about it. Yeah. I'm still on tour. I don't know the code. You can forward slash shows. Uh, there's tickets left for a handful of the dates and the rest of them are sold out. And we're not adding any more because uh, I, I don't want to. So, uh, whatever dates are on sale now are the last dates. So, don't be like, oh, well, he'll add another Manchester one. The sixth one is the last one. And Birmingham is the last one and all that sort of stuff. And our arena show is on Friday, the 9th of December. There's still uh, a couple of thousand tickets left for that. And, Dan, you're on tour as well. I am on tour. Belfast, come out, support me. Nantwich has got tickets for sale. We've just added um, an extra Manchester day and... There is talks of another Liverpool date at Hot Water. So lots to do. DanNightingale.com. It would be great to see you. Starts in September. Oh, aye. Oh, I'm, aye. I'm tired now. Just press the button. Been a beauty. Bye, everyone. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Been a pleasure, mate. Bye, Felicia.